You are now tuning in to Respect the DJ Podcast, coming to you live. Welcome to Respect the DJ Podcast. I'm your host, DJ Junebug, alongside DJ Correa. Yes, sir. Today, our guest, New York City legend, the first DJ to stream his show live on the internet. You might have seen him on Be Real TV. You might have heard him on Shade 45. Mm. His blends are my top five in my books. Absolutely. Let's give a big round of applause to the one and only Eddie B. Swift. Let's go, let's go. Wow, I, just, I wasn't prepared for that. Hold on. No guy digging, digging, digging. Bring it back for a second. <laughs> Somebody opened up the Google on me. Make sure y'all got the good page because there's some of them that got some misinformation. But all the stuff you got was pretty it's much pretty, the, the, it's pretty the good thing. Yeah, you okay, okay. Know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't try and miss anything, you know what I'm saying? Because you are the first one that I remember streaming your internet show live. When we had, when we had the regular um, speed dial shit. <laughs> oh, like the AOL? <laughs> AOL but not AOL for shit. none. True, true, true story. That internet shit. I've been doing internet radio since 96. There was a... I know there was... No, I'm sorry not to cut you off. There, there was an internet radio show. It was in... um, in Down in, in Soho. 95 I, Live. It was 95 Live, but was there another one? No, it might have been 95 Live because it was up... up like in a loft type type building, I that remember I went there the a couple first times. Ones. Yeah, and then uh, the one that I got down the platform, Simply Radio. Okay, those cats came out here. Oh. It wasn't. It wasn't until I moved out here that I was doing. That's when UStream started in in two thousand seven. Oh, I forgot about them. Yeah. So that's when my video aspect and that was where everything took off. Right. That gave me my second, third, and fourth life in in this uh, DJ game. Because if it wasn't for shit like that, right, and Serato's. We wouldn't be having this. We you would be having the, the three teeth in the mouth, the fucked up hairstyle. It, it, June wouldn't have picked me up shit. I would have been a phone call and shit, an email. Niggas would have been just reading emails. All right, I did this, you know. All right, let's move on. Let's get one of the local cats. Email, put in text, dog. Yeah. <laughs> no, fuck that sky pager. Right, right, right. But all right, we're gonna kick this off. You know, what I mean, um, I'm sure we might know. A couple people may know, but we want to know how'd you get your DJ name? Mistake. Okay. Uh, Bobby Davis, he used to run a sure record pool. Okay. Uh, I went up there one of the nights with a couple of other artists, and they were introducing. And at one time, if you can believe it, I was actually svelte. I said that good because I put the good seat phones in there. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was skinny, but I came from the break dance. I was a B-boy. Okay. They used to call me Loop. All right. So when we got up there, Bobby Davis is fucking high as a fuck, drunk as a fuck. And they said... Who's this guy? He said, yeah, that's Eddie. Eddie who? Eddie Loop. Eddie Swift. And he says, and I said, no, Loop. Eddie B. Swift. And I said, yeah, whatever. Like, because when you're talking <laughs> to somebody who is mentally stimulated, that's an unwinnable conversation. It sounded like the dude was Italian. As a joke. Was it's, he Italian? No, nah, Bobby Davis is black. He sounded like, because he got like, like, you know what I mean? Like that twang. Like, like hope. No, well, again, right. you got you like got, a Joe Pesci, the, the like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, All right, yeah. see, you just right now took a shot at me because I'm the one telling the story, and that's not the first time I heard the Joe Pesci reference. But yeah, now nah, Bobby Davis is a big black dude, and um, yeah, he did that. And so the guys that I went up there with, uh, future B boy uh, record recording artist, not him and his brother, mm-hmm. they uh, you, as a joke, they were like Eddie B Swift, Eddie B Swift, and I'm like, stop saying that, like you know that shit would get under my skin because you know I'm like, come on, <laughs> he thought it was, he thought they were making fun of yeah, you, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't that I, I until I did a party in uh, Sweet Sixteen. We used to do those back in the days. And <laughs> the, the maitre d said, "What's his DJ name?" So the guy went ahead and said, "His name is Eddie B Swift." So when he introduced me to the crowd and he said Eddie B Swift, I gave him that look. It just never way, went away from there. That was it. So that's kind of like how the origin of the name came. I think it's dope because it's, it's something. You All know, good ideas like, start as mistakes. Yeah, exactly. All good ideas. I think it's dope. It, it, it definitely flows. You know what I'm saying? Like It flows because I've been saying it for the last 35 fucking <laughs> right, right. Are we allowed to curse? You're allowed Absolutely. to curse. Okay, Say whatever I, you want. Shit, I was a mistake I when, when they had me. <laughs> <laughs> when my parents had me, I was a mistake. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want. Look at me now, Junebug. <laughs> as far as cursing, like Junebug is the epitome of cursing. Shit. Like, you curse your I mean? lungs out. <laughs> all right, get it all out right here. Uh, how'd you start DJing? What made you want to say I want to I want to be a DJ? Um, again, going back into my b boy days, break dancing was kind of like a, it, this was uh, mid '80s, and b boying was kind of like going away, and 
they had like this movement uh, where house music was starting to become the thing. Okay. And people were dressing very. If you remember freestyle music, they used to call it webo music. They were right because they, they had were the, the, the webo dance, the webo dance. They yeah. were wearing the, the the suede boots with the feathers in the cap. Okay. And uh, the tight uh, straight leg lees with the permanent creases. Right, right. With the, with the laces, just, with the laces on their yes, pants yes. and the jeans. I had that shit. <laughs> I can, and, and, and you either had a pair of Playboys or the Stinos. I two tone jeans. Damn, so. AJ's, come on, man. Stop so, playing. So I'm gonna start. This, this can turn to a fashion show. It can turn to a DJ show. I'm gonna call a uh, Juice that he had. So I'm gonna call, 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 start calling him Webo Man. <laughs> I couldn't. I, I, I couldn't dress like that. I was the guy dressed with the AJ's. I would wear the football jerseys. Right. And so I went to a party, and I saw this kid named John Jay. He was DJing. Just, I, I love him, but he's an ugly motherfucker. <laughs> he's a Craig, he's and, a Craig Mac. Oh damn, that's what. God, he made Rest in peace, Craig Mac, Mac man. Rest in peace, Craig Mac. He, <laughs> so he was DJing a party, and I'm noticing the girls are all vibing off of him. Now, coming from the b boy world, break dancers always want to be the center of attention. Right. You always want to be like, look at me. Right. I'm watching this dude, and he's all he's doing is playing records, and these girls are gravitating towards him. He has some of the joints, like yeah, the, that, the bamboo out. earring girls from back out. in the days. Yeah. These girls today can can never touch that because right. that was. So I'm watching that. I'm like, ooh, so that's what made me want to get into it. Okay. Because of groupie love, he was getting. Oh no, see, we, we, we <laughs> yeah. not. We not <laughs> we'll that get to that later. We'll get to that later. This is the eighties we're talking yeah. about now. <laughs> he said. <laughs> we we'll get to that later. We we'll get to that later. Yeah, finish your story. Don't pay. Don't worry no, no, about no, you no. Right that, that, that's pretty much how it is. <laughs> no. I saw him DJing, and that that's what made me want to DJ. I saw him. I saw the attention he got, right. and I was like, "Yeah." Now you know it was me getting the equipment and all of that. And I grew up in Bronx, but like I, I lived a block away from Bronx River Houses. Okay, which is where Zulu was. Right. The unofficial official start of where hip hop originated. That you know, right, it's, right, right. It's subjective, depending on who you're asking. But I grew up in the middle of that. So I knew the cats from over there, Richie Rich, Star Child, mm -hmm. and they would have their turntables. I would go there and I would watch them in the park, and I, I could never get behind the ropes. And you know they, but they were there and they were DJing. Everybody, mm -hmm. everybody was just focused on them. Right, of course. So I would start hanging around these guys, and I was like, all right, I gotta get turntables. I went to Rock and Soul, couldn't get twelve hundreds. I went and got a pair of Gemini one hundred ones. Oh man! Why you didn't go to Southern Boulevard? Belt no, drive. Man. Oh, see, that, that was a whole other hustle in Southern Boulevard. <laughs> Rock and Soul was the place to go if you wanted DJ equipment. Right, you had to go there. Yeah, I got a Gemini twenty two hundred. I remember the shit like yesterday, and the chick Shirley, and which wh whom I later went to work for, mm -hmm. she scared the shit out of me. It was like, oh, you don't got enough money. What do you, you, you want to do here? Just take this, and I was like, damn, I'm there. Felt bad about. What, what I just getting? spent my money on. Right. Went home and I was looking at my shit. I was like, when shit comes fresh out the box, it looks official. Of course. When you start touching it is when it's it, a whole you start realizing story. how much a piece of shit it is. Right, right. So these, these were bell drives. So once, you know, I'm over here trying to spin back. Oh, I'm like, man. what are you doing the sound? And, and then I couldn't match nothing up. I said, uh-uh. So a, a couple of, you know, I my, my house was kind of like the party house. Okay. My parents would always invite their friends over, play spades. Right, right. I would be the one that changed all the records. Mm -hmm. I asked my father, Dad, can I have a party here? Okay. He's like, sure, sure. So I invited all the local kids. All right. It's just was my coming out party. <laughs> okay. Wait, what do you mean? That that no no not uh, <laughs> you know what I, I thought I thought we was let's respectable adults here that we don't gotta say pause and all this but no, no, I'm, okay I'm hold on, let's you. bring it back no, no, no. pause no, no pause no pause we good we good no it, it, it was my you know coming out party as a DJ like okay. you know I, I was gonna present my, to my area because they didn't know me they knew me as Little Puerto Rico they knew me as Lou they knew me okay. as you know Little Eddie right right and, and you know I wanted to show them this is who I am now so before you threw the party nobody knew you was practicing in the bedroom type of thing no they. Nobody, Nobody had an idea. Okay, all right. Everybody was clueless about this. Right. So I did the, you know, did the party, and my friend, uh, or, or a guy who I thought was my friend at the time, Chumbly, mm -hmm. he, he was like the local DJ who was kind of the thing. Okay. So he came, and he's playing. He got all his records there. I had, like, maybe a handful of records. I'll never forget. One of them was Freeze IOU. One of them was Art and Noise Beatbox. Okay. Dope records. Eight Arms to Hold You. What fucking, that, the, for the movie The Goonies. 
Okay. It was like an Arthur Baker kind of <laughs> set. Uh, a mixture, a mixture a- of At stuff, least yeah. that's what I told myself. Because right. when I, you go to Rock and Soul, they just, get this record, get this record, get this record. So they gave me like that whole set. So I practiced that set. Okay. Now, you ever see a, a DJ who's never played before, but they get on the set and they put on the first two records and then they look. You After they get going it going, on. they look for that seal of approval. Right, right. And you see everybody looking at like, yeah, what are you doing? I man? didn't get that reaction because I was doing it to myself. I was looking in the mirror. I used to have my dresser <laughs> with the mirror. I was looking at myself. All so right. all this time, I thought I was like, oh. I'm doing it. I'm killing it right now. Right, like, right, right. Yo, they going to be, yo, this is it. Like, I'm going to be a star. Right. <laughs> so now the party's going into my house. Now, house parties, something always dramatic happens. Mine was my father, who is a, uh, who's still here, is a heavy Budweiser drinker. Okay. Had quite a few of those. And decided to lay a fart as he was walking to the party. So he so, was crop dusting. Yeah, so that kind of set the thing. So my man Chumley got off. He's like, Eddie, you ready? And I was like, yeah. Let's do this. I got the two records out. I said, boom, put on IOU. And it was like, record stop. Next one came on. So now it's like, all right, I'm going to bring in Art of Noise. Now, now because we got BPM counters and all of that stuff. Right. IOU is like 119 BPM. Right. Auto noise is like 110, 112. Mm-hmm. I know nothing about count at this point. Right. I know nothing about dropping on the one. Mm-hmm. And I go and I'm just looking at everybody. I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to give it to y'all right now. <laughs> y'all ready? I'm thinking now bitches can just start dropping their pants. And, yeah. and there's going to be a lot of orgy sex going on. And yeah, you went, you all was, the dudes yeah. are going to be like, yo, Ed, you fucking amazing. Yo, killing it. No, man. When I did that fade and I looked at everybody, they left. Oh, damn. They left. They left a free party. They left. The, it, besides the fact that my father had cleared it out, <laughs> right. they had left. No goodbye, no wave, nothing. They just left. Y'all was devastated. Damn. That crushed my soul. And <laughs> I said, oh, this is never going to happen to me again. Right. And so at this point... Again, I live in, by Bronx River. I would go to all the jams. I would watch them. I would study their hands and see what they were doing because yeah. I'm thinking that there's a, a, a process right. to mix records. Like, again, I know nothing about the count, BPMs, none of that stuff. So I'm watching them. And then I'm seeing them moving the pitch on the side. So I'm saying, all right, what is that doing? What is that doing? Like, right. I'm, I'm thinking it's a fader slide on a turntable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were doing it off of 1200s. The, the Gemini 101s had. A uh, thumb roll. Yeah, thumb roll. Yep. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm watching them do that, and I'm like, okay, they're doing something with that. So I right. got to get those turntables. I went to go work for a cleaners. Okay. Delivering clothes. Man, when I tell you everything that I got, I saved up. And this is when 1200s was like. Like five something probably? No. Dude, they were like 190. Yeah, no. Nah, but that was that expensive time. for back then. Yeah. For, for, oh, my, we were talking well, about this in the 80s. Back now. then. <laughs> Like, again, 80s money is not, you know, 2022 <laughs> money. You know? I don't know how much you know, it was. $80, you blow going to 7-Eleven, going to, right you know, now, whatever. Yeah, pick up a Slurpee right now. So, yeah. you know, that that's what they were going for. I still couldn't afford that. So, one of my boys uh, was like, Eddie, I'll let you hold. He had four of them. Oh, wow. He let me hold his. Back in the days, if somebody let you hold, son, you kept it. <laughs> it just never left your house. They knew it was there. Yeah, you just, you were, just, you were man, storing it for them. It never got back. That unlocked the key. Because then now, I, I, I would sit there and I, I would just, no mix or nothing, I would put a record on there and start playing with the pitch. And I'm starting to see it's going faster and slower. Now, again, at those times that, you know, the Arthur Baker, who's uh, who did a lot of the... Uh, the B-Boy records. A lot of B-Boy records, thank you. Right. Um, he, he had like a certain kind of program, so they were all kind of like in the same BPM. So it was like, all right, all right how do I line this up with this? Mm-hmm. So there was no YouTube, there was nobody... They're, back in those days, DJs did not help you. They kind of like just threw you in the deep end without a life jacket. Right, right. If you came up swimming, you could survive. If you good, couldn't, yeah. you asked out. Right. So I would keep doing it, and, and I still couldn't figure out because, again, it's about the count. Right. If you know how to drop around to one, you've already won half the battle. Right. Again, watching this uh, continuously, I was like saying to myself, but wait a minute, I hear a boom. I went and I started looking at every record. I started seeing they were marking the records. So uh-huh. I was like, all right, why are they marking it? And then I would look for the first thing to, the first beat to drop where I would set 
the, I would the take mark. the stickers okay. from uh, cassette tapes. Okay. And I would put that as as a mark on right. it. So then that that kind of again nobody showed me this. Yes. Yeah, kind of figured it out. And I was like, error. all right, wait yeah. a minute. Okay, now I'm playing them both at the same time. Mm-hmm. And they were just kind of like slams, but it was just, it was, now it was tolerable. Because okay. now I'm hearing it the same way they're doing it at the park. None about scratching or none of that stuff. It was, it was just that simple. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get no pussy when I was young. I, I, I as athletic as I thought I was, yeah. I, I used to think I was nice with my one-handed handle in basketball. <laughs> I had the Euro step before oh. it was called the Euro step. I would take three steps, but I would argue with them all the time. That it wasn't walking. I, yeah, it wasn't walking. But I couldn't, you know, I, I I didn't do none of that stuff. I, all I did was DJ. Right. I had baddest chicks digging me in those days. I didn't care. Yeah. I went to school. I couldn't wait to get home. I couldn't wait to to, to, to have enough money to go get a 12-inch right. record. So I have to say pause. No, no, you good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I see this one smacking no, no. over here. If I say 12 inch, I'm going to ask but what yo, makes you. But yo, in 30 seconds, he said mirror, one hand, 12 inch. <laughs> and looking at myself. <laughs> right? So, you know. You can leave it there, man. Yo, I'm, I'm grown. I'm grown. That's how we treat it. We grown folks up here. So it, that's what it became about it. And then I wouldn't come out again. Until I was right, because right, right. you only have one chance to make a first impression. Yeah, I already fucked that one up. Right, but I also had the, the fortune of they were all high, they were all drunk. So chances are they're not going to remember. Yeah. The only one that remembers the two fucking records I played was me, because I tell the story to all of them that the ones that are still around and they're like, hey, I don't remember that. I don't remember that. And I'm like, but you were there. You left. <laughs> it was like, no, yeah. I don't remember that. Just they know me now as a, 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 a good enough DJ to say they know me. Right, right, right. So, again, it, it was just I, I, I had to to learn on my own. And once I did, it was a wrap. That's, that was the beginning of, of what I am today. Right, dope. So did any DJ actually help you out or mentor you, like show you any ropes of anything? There was, there was a cat called Crazy Joe, French Joe, mm-hmm. Richie Rich. They weren't the run of the mill DJs. Like they were just local DJs okay. who had a set. You know, I had French O and, and Mike set. They didn't do shit because nobody wanted to share records. Records was, you know, a, a premium. Like, you know, you didn't give away No, of course not, yeah. And I had to go get my own shit and that's when ultimate breaks and beats were mm-hmm. a thing and you get those and I I would start hearing about these DJ battles. And okay. again, you're in Bronx River, I was there and any time you see Jimmy Jazz Jazzy J, Bambata, uh, Red Alert, all of these guys go over there. And, you know, when I seen them go back and forth, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, what is that? And it wasn't until Wild Style came out. Okay. And the senior, and that's like every DJ who's came up in that era will always re- will re- reference that flash thing in when, the kitchen. In the kitchen, yeah. When he was on the iron yeah, table. Yeah, flash, yep. And I saw that shit, and he, he didn't have 12s. No. So... Again, I was like, oh, my God, this is a whole different thing. I got to get different turntables. I'm like, <laughs> I want that. And, man, I, I would watch that scene on v- VCR, rewind it, rewind it, rewind it, and, and that, just back and forth just to see his movements. I couldn't for the life of me do it. Right. For the life of me. And then, again, just like anything else, it, it kicks in one day. You get certain records. Like, I didn't notice, like, when you would buy records, the pinhole that you would, you know, put the record on. Mm-hmm. Some of them were too wide. Yep. So some of them were too tight. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I would put them on there and it'd be too loose. I'm like, well, why is it dragging? Like, I'm trying right. to shift my hand. I'm going through all of these changes. Yeah. Yeah. And then I would watch them, seeing them put pieces of paper in there. Mm-hmm. And then it was the needles. And, you know, there wasn't auto funds back then. Nah. There were pickerings. Right. Pickering, yeah. And I, I, I would say, okay, they're putting pennies on it. I'm going to put a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Make it heavier. <laughs> Biggest mistake. This shit's a slide. I was going through needles. Needles back then were like nineteen dollars. Right. The replacement tips, so you can't you can't afford to make those kinds of mistakes. Yeah. But again, like I said, it, it just all clicks in. And the thing is, you ha- if you want something bad, like you know, in life, if you're passionate about something, whether yep. it's playing ball, DJing, being a good parent, whatever, right? You got to put in the hours and the time to do it, and you got to do what other people aren't willing to do. And you don't make mistakes. 
There's nothing wrong no, with no, that. No, no. Well, no, I'm wrong with I that. made nothing but mistakes. Yeah, yeah. And, and like it, I said. That's kind of like what builds character. Right. And that's your but rite of passage, too. When you, know you have mean? that passion for what you do, and you couldn't tell me nothing about music. I I, I sleep that. I, 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 I fucked up, you know, my, raising my... My first son, because mm-hmm. I wanted to be a DJ so bad. And, yeah, hey, you, 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 know, you, you preach into the choir here, you know yeah, what I mean? True. Luckily, I have a great relationship with my son now. Oh, now, yeah. You know I, what I mean? I, but on our I, way up here, I called him. him. I was like, yo, because he lives around here. Okay. You know, so I, it, this is what I wanted so bad. And it wasn't for fame or money. It was just that love. Like, you know, and I think Clark Kent said it, we're all given a talent. Yeah. It's just trying to figure out what our talent what is, is yeah. and how to harness it mm-hmm. and how to put it out there for everybody to, right. <clears throat> to enjoy it. Because you, you, everybody lives off their talent. Yeah. Everybody lives off their talent one way, whether you're nice playing baseball or anything like that. I just had a thing for music. Yeah. You know, always brought up around music when I would get quarters or pesetas coming up from Puerto Rican household, I wouldn't go to the arcade and play Space Invaders or Asteroids. Right. I put that shit in my pocket and save it because the 45 shop that used to be on Westchester Avenue used to sell the records for 99 cents. Damn. And I would go and I would buy these and I had a 45 collection and I took care of my shit. I'd be there, wipe it down. I would take people's clothes in my house, never my own, because <laughs> I had to share them with my brother. But right. I would take people's clothes and wipe my shit down. It was pristine. My first turntable, truth be told, was a Fisher Price turntable. Mm. They had a setup that did you put records on it. Right. That was the first one that I owned, and that I would play with. My parents had the old style shit where you would clump up forty fives on a spindle, a spindle yeah. put them there, the big wood case. Yeah, and then they had mm. a, a seventeen inch black and white TV yeah, yeah, in there, yeah. and then the eight track player was inside there. Yep. That was I the could, entertainment center. Yes, until. Finger Hut was created, and <laughs> my father bought that Pioneer <laughs> setup that was on the front page, and it came with a turntable, cassette deck, all of that shit. And I went when nobody was home, put my record on there, and and I went, and then I just said, oh, "I'm trying to spin this back," <laughs> and the needle tore off. I ran. I ran. Right. There's certain things I think if you grow up in New York, you know about. You know about Finger Hut. Oh yeah. You know about uh, Siemens Furniture. Uh, Popular and Alexander's. Oh yeah. Oh, and, and Woolworth. And TSS Cor- Corvettes. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, but then. And, and, and if you if you're from the Bronx, then and, and on Fordham Road, you know Robbins. Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we lived in Robbins. Uh, yeah, I mean. This is making me feel even fucking older, older. than I thought. <laughs> I think I'm coming here. Nah, nah, it's, nah, like, it's a flashback. Well, it's talking yeah. history, and now yeah, we're talking about history. my nah, fucking nah, 70s. Nah, we're talking about everything. Right. Talking Eddie about B. Swift history. Man, what you got, Joe? So who's the first um, DJ or promoter put you on? Baby Heck. Baby Heck. Mm. Baby Heck was a DJ. Remember, boy, did you ever hear the story about Boy George, the drug dealer? That, yes, that was, yes, right? yes. That he did a party on a boat where he had Sapphire, he had okay. Big Daddy Kane. Yep, yep. He gave out yep. diamond-crusted belt buckles to his team. Yep, yep. And the fucking caterers were the feds. Yep. Baby Heck was the DJ from that party. Oh damn! He was a DJ from La Mirage. He he did all of those shits, and he was like the it guy. Him and Goongi were like those dudes when I was coming up. Right. Shout out to Goongi, man. Yes. So I, I, when I started working at a record store, Baby Heck was working there. Right. He was like, "Yo, look, I'm gonna give you a slot because I would play all the hip hop at the store. He played all the house music. The other guy played the freestyle music. He's like, but everybody gravitates towards me. Okay. So he's like, I'm gonna bring you, and this is uh." I want to say Red Zone. Mm-hmm. He was DJing there, and that's, you know, he, he was opening for Dave Morales. He went to the bathroom, said, Eddie, get, just go, play the next record. Because right. he knew I could play house music, whatever. I didn't do that. I played yeah. a hip hop record. And then they came running back, and all of a sudden it was like, but it was like a, a, a revelation. Like, okay. Because Red Zone was a big, and you should know this because you ain't. Fully Floridian. You only got what, 15 years on your books? <laughs> your like previous that. lifetime. Yeah, you know, Red Zone was a club club. club it was club. one of yeah, the biggest club clubs. Club. Yeah. yeah. And the limelight yes. on Red Zone, those were a club club. That whole era. So palladium. Palladium. When, yeah. A real palladium. A real palladium. Story for days there. So when when that happened, I'm playing the reaction, it was like, holy shit. I only got like maybe six or seven minutes. Mm-hmm. I played three records. Okay. 
but you know, I played him and he saw the reaction. He was like, all right. Then he did a club in the Bronx called the Circle Club. We had Tribe Called Quest. This is when they dropped the Benita Apple Bum. Okay. Right? And they, they, they were doing that. Q-Tip didn't show up. Mm. It was Jerobi and Fife. Okay. And he brought me to play there. But he was a house DJ, so the setup was not hip-hop friendly. He had a fucking Yuri there. Okay. And if you know what a Yuri is, Yuri's like the old... It was styled after the old Bozak mixes. All knobs. We're doing knobs. Yeah. All knobs. So, but I played on it, made it work. Also, that was the day that a fat Joe, a young fat Joe, wearing that Dapper Dan yellow Gucci suit leather, made his first appearance, you know, in that realm. Because they he, they was trying to get him put on. It, it, it was a crazy night, but that was my first night of getting put on. After that, the promoter that uh, Heck was working for, uh, his name was Eric Brahms. His pops used to own Studio 54. Okay. Eric Brahms. Uh, Maurice Brahms. They made the movie. Right. Steve Rebell got the old chain. But he was the one that was like, look, Eddie, I'm going to start doing stuff with you. Because at that time, hip-hop was was hard. It was hard to play that in a club because they used to have to get they used to have to have insure those places. <laughs> for those security, right. more security. security yeah. yeah. That was the time Heavy did... The Heavy did... Uh, it was at one of the CCNYs. He used to do like the celebrity basketball games. That's when that first start, started. Okay, okay. And somebody had gotten stomped out. Right, right. Like it the, was Heavy D uh, and Puffy when we first started. That City College. Right, city yeah, college. City College, city yeah. College. yeah. And, yeah. and uh, Bell Biff, well, all of those people there, that happened. Puff at that time was doing Red Zone. Mm-hmm. After that point, they shut down hip-hop clubs because they saw them as nothing but violence. Yeah. Latin Quarters, the Palladium, every, everywhere... That played hip hop, they were shutting them down for that. Mm-hmm. They needed a face for that. Hip hop, let's call it what it is. We got a room for Boricuas here. It was Morenos. Right. It right. was Morenos heavy. When when you heard hip hop, you, you would associate that to the Morenos. If you heard Spanish music, that was the Boricuas. You know, and then they started putting Latin hip hop on us, which was eventually called freestyle, freestyle music. Freestyle, yeah. They needed a face, a safe face. To put out there, yeah. so it was like we're gonna try Eddie. So, David Morales did a, a night. This is well, El General, El General, right? First came up, boom, 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 yes. The mommy, boom, 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 whatever. The first to yeah, me, yeah, the yeah. first yeah. reggaeton Don't record. Record. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> but that's another argument for another day. It was them. It was the Barnyard Boys who did the version of In the Ghetto that we're hearing what now. Skrillex did now, right. and they're yeah. acting like this is brand new. Yeah, but yeah. This was but then. And then, brand Nubians. Okay. This was the card. Mm-hmm. It was like, Eddie, you got 15 minutes to play to set up for the show. I played Eric B for president, make the music. With it. Like, all of this top billing, all of the staples okay. back then. Right. Because it was a Puerto Rican face, it was easier for the promoters to digest. Because these owners of the clubs, all Jewish guys. Yeah. All, you know, they, they again, they, they don't, they, they're, not, they're not racist, but... The only thing they give a fuck about is money. That's it. Yeah. But if if a race is associated to a stigma, yeah, they move away from that and try to find a replacement for that. Right, right. I became the replacement. Okay. So now I'm getting booked to do all these gigs. You know, I'm a Puerto Rican kid. And now they didn't put faces on the flyer, so it didn't matter. Right. But it was just like re- reputation only. Well, I mean, you know? the, the name Eddie, I mean. <laughs> yeah. You know, but. but yeah, you Puerto Rican know, white dude. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but see, the people were going there. They weren't dressed like the way, the way hip hop was looking back in the days. Hip hop wasn't fucking leather chaps and all of that shit that right. Flash and them was wearing. Right, right. It was fucking. It was hoodies. It was Timberlands. It, it was. Jabot jeans. It was, it was, it wasn't the look like what today is. Of course, of course, yeah. When I I ushered in, it was the button downs. It was the khakis. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? It was the clean look. Right. And that's what when 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 a club owner would see that, he'd be like, "All right, we can put a bunch of those in there. They ain't worried about fighting or anything like that." Right. So that's kind of like how yeah that that run was able to jump off. True that. So question, fast forward a little bit. How do you be real hook up? <laughs> in Florida, out here, <laughs> I was doing Ustream. De La so was doing Ustream at the same time, Maceo. And he caught my stream. And he said, yo, 
I want to put you down with me. Yo, okay. you come over here. So I was like, all right, great. I'm living in Florida. He said, it doesn't matter. I'll give you my login. You just do it. Okay. So I, as I was doing the show, who comes into uh, in, in the chat room? Yeah. Be real. Okay. Because he was starting to do something. Okay. So he was like, he would, he would message me and be like, yo, come do that for me. <coughs> I was loyal to De La Soul and them because Macy opened up a lot of doors for me. Right. But I've always was a Cypress fan. Like, you know. Of course. Cypress is hardcore. Cypress right, was, right, right. you know, Spanish, you know. Yeah, I, I'm yep. thinking all of that stuff. Yeah. And I had history with, with Be Real. Right. Because, you know, <laughs> he smashed the girl that I, 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 I ended up smashing. Oh, wow. So oh my God. We had same, one of, same day? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, no, not even close. But that's that was my, my link to him. And I always felt like I wanted to tell him that. Right. I said, nigga, I smashed one of your girls. Oh, my God. You know, so you know, he, 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 never knew? <laughs> he never knew? He told, I told him later on, like, but this is a nigga who fucked Carmen Electra and all those other <laughs> yeah, bitches. So he was like, he was talking about? some fucking bitch that drank 40s and a paper bag <laughs> out of the fucking Bronx. He didn't care about none of that shit. He looked at me, he was like, all right, idiot. He's like, up. who? I don't even remember her. <laughs> just shut up. So, <laughs> but, you know, we, we started, I started rocking with him then. Right. And when they came to do shows on this side, he was like, yo, come you know, meet up with us. Let's, you know, Lincoln. Yeah. He thought because I was from New York, all I did was smoke. No such thing. Right. I met, they were doing Jones Beach with 311. Okay. And um, I, I went to go meet him over there, and he was like, yo, I love what you're doing. Just rock out. Now, I'm saying to myself, when he asked me this, oh, I'm going to end up being the next DJ for Cypress. <laughs> like, yo, you like the way I DJ? <laughs> DJ Muggs. <laughs> but Muggs wasn't down with them. They were using a, um, Julio G at Julio the time. Julio G, okay. So, you know, I'm saying to myself, oh, this is this is a Fucking slam dunk right now. Right, right. I'm gonna fucking party with him. So I went out to Cali. I was doing 24 hour sets that started out here in Orlando that I would DJ for 24 hours. Damn. But that was a lot of drugs at that time. That was pre Red Bull. Oh my God. Pre five hour energy shots, hardcore drugs. And I was doing a bunch of them. I went out there to do it. The drugs or the, or the no, set? No, no. I, <laughs> I went out there to do a 24 hour set. Oh, okay, okay. Except okay. I'm, I'm going to LA now. Now, mind you, the time difference and all of that stuff. I went there. You do a 36 hour set. <laughs> no, no, no. Quite the opposite. When you walk in, you, have, you you can tell motherfuckers who smoke cigarettes when you walk in a the spot, they smell like a pack of new boys. Right. When you open up the door to Be Real Studio, it's 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 the stench of weed smoke from the Cheech and Chong days. Right. Like it's in the fibers, it's in, it's in the walls. Yeah, it's just, I walked in there and the it just smacks you in the face. And I said, Right, right. Oh. All of a sudden, my mood dullened. It was like, Yo, you ready to DJ for 24 hours? Like, yeah, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm having munchies. And meanwhile, I'm having to sit around. So, again, midnight in, in LA time is three o'clock in the morning. Three o'clock in the morning, I'm, if I wasn't DJing, I was sleeping. So now the, the, the fucking sleepiness is kicking in. But I managed to pull it off. And ever since then, he just, we, we, we've been cool ever since. He, yeah. I get to do sh open up shows for them. Mm -hmm. Never got to DJ. I DJed for him as an individual. Okay. Not for the group. No, not for the group. But right. he would let me open up for them when they would do shows, uh, Hall uh, Haunted Hill. Okay. I would warm up the thing, and I would get an hour set. Oh, that's, that's a nice, that's okay. nice chunk you of time, yeah. You can't complain about that. That's, that's the ultimate look. So while everybody was worrying about looking good local and playing at all of the local bars, dive bars, right. I was opening up shows for Cypress. Dope. That's dope. Are you still doing the Mind Trip um, show? So I, I, I still do it. I haven't done it. Yeah. yeah. I, I've, I've been working for, for uh, how was it Johnny Drama said? I've been working for the past 11 years, but not the last two years. <laughs> I know, so I, I, I teach DJ classes. Dope, dope. So that's real dope. That kind of started taking on my time because okay. I would do the shows at twelve o'clock yeah. to coincide with LA time at nine o'clock. Okay. That's when B wanted me to rock, but right. that's you know, I was teaching classes and then I was just doing them less and less. And then mm -hmm. you know, it, it I, I've again being as old as I am and still being able to be an active DJ. Yeah, it's a blessing. It's yeah. a blessing. So, yeah. you know, I, I kind of got to pick and choose. Right. Well, plug, plug in that DJ, the, the DJ school you're doing. Plug it in. Uh, well, no, it's it was at Rock and Soul. Okay. And you know they they would sell you know like people would buy equipment and they'd be like, all right, right. 
I bought the equipment. How do come, I? Come with Eddie? Yeah. No, but they would be like, oh, okay, what do I do now? Right. They would go there and buy a fucking controller. they buy a fucking Pioneer controller, and then they don't know what to do with it. They don't right. know how to hook it up. They don't know if they have the right laptop, and what about the music and all of this stuff. So it was like Eddie. It was like a two-part thing. You know, I was okay. part salesman, but, but you know, teacher. Right, right, right. So then they would start coming up there, and then the, the, the age difference started changing. It would be... I start off with older people. Yeah. And the thing is, DJ people who are older that have been doing it are kind of set in their ways. Yeah. It's hard to teach somebody because right. they feel like they know it all. Yep. And that you're, they're inventing the wagon wheel. Yep. Meanwhile, the shit that nobody took the time to teach me, I'm trying to drop these gems. I'm not trying to tell you, oh, you got to do vinyl. You got to do turntables. You want to use control? Like, I'll, I'll do all of that. But the, the, today's attitude towards it, like, the days of having a DJ that's been around for 30 years, yeah. we'll never see that again. Yeah. I can assure you, once this wave of DJs is done, yeah. the Jazzy Jeffs, uh, uh, the Flashes and all that, yeah. we're never going to see, you know, you're never going to see somebody who's been doing it their whole life. Right. It's just not going to happen. This is a fad to, to most people now. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a fly by night type of shit. Get I, some of, uh, of, of June's favorite uh, groupies. And then um, be out the door. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll stay away from that one, dude. I see what y'all do with that. So that, that subject. All right, quick question, because we like to ask, yes. get everybody's opinion on this. Who do you think is more important, important, the DJ or the promoter? The promoter's job is to now the promoters. Right. They have they play an important position. But they don't value the DJ. They think that yep. the crowd is there because of them. And in some cases, right. it is. Right. Some cases, it is. But the DJ, at the end of the day, is the most important thing because if you don't have somebody in there that's playing to people to keep them engaged, mm -hmm. you don't have a party. Right. You yep. know. And, and the thing is, they think because you're playing the top hits and you're playing Bad Bunny, you're playing Ray Thorn and all of that stuff, that everybody's going to start coming. Right. That's when it's just start getting cheaper and cheaper. Yep. And yep. The value of the DJ has gone down so much because nobody takes the time to to truly value themselves. Right, right. You know? Well, if you had a choice, what would you prefer, uh, vinyl or 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 controller or digital DJing? I, I still DJ on turntables, so I, I I'd go. All right, guys, get ready to make a face. I go both ways. <laughs> okay, I can do a controller. I can do turntables. It, 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 to to want to do vinyl is unrealistic. Fucking. Un 50 fucking years old. Like, yeah. do I really want to walk around with a case of records right. and go through that shit? That was that was a headache within itself. Do you still have your vinyl? Some. No, okay. I don't have the collection. That, yeah. It, 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 and now, I'm sorry, you know, like, I know collectives and stuff like, and again, walking in here, seeing this is dope, but that could just, just tells you the product of when that was his AD. You know what I'm saying? When I was coming up, I'm talking about Suck MC's days. Yeah. Veronica, Veronica days, yeah. PSK, Yellow Label, Graffiti. Wait, 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 wait. You, didn't look up, you didn't look up there then. You got the Fat <laughs> All right, Boys. See, I see, no, no, I did Curtis see that. Blow, I, I did see that. Run DMC. I, I had to put on my readers to look at that. I had to make sure <laughs> I was seeing what I was saying. There's a couple of, but again, that, but we, there is a difference in age, even though mm -hmm. it's a subtle difference, but right. you can tell where you, where you came right, from. Right, right, right. Anybody who said that they prefer vinyl, I'm sorry. I'm that's stupid. You can't travel with it. You know, like, what are you going to do? You got to make sure that shit doesn't melt. You got to make sure shit don't get scratched. <laughs> or stolen. Or stolen. Like, you know, it's it's crazy. But digitally, laptop, backpack, that's right. it. You know what I'm saying? Right. That, that's how easy it is. If I had to fucking, if I'm coming here to play tonight, and if I had to come here and bring vinyl, this would have been a two-minute interview. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's up, guys? Thank you for the water. Thank <laughs> you for the shirt. Junebug, it was great meeting you after 20 years or 10, <laughs> right, right, 15 right, right. years, and it would have been over, you know. But what about like, like, like home? Like say you're home and you want to do a, a DJ set. I can, I can do a vinyl set. Right. I can do, do a vinyl, vinyl set. set or you, a, a huh? vinyl set? Do you prefer a vinyl set or does it matter? Really, at this point, no. Because like, uh, see, to, to ask me that question now, I, I like I'm at the end of my my road as far as the DJ. Again, I've got 30, 35 years in this game. Okay, salute to that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, salute to that. I would yeah. love to play vinyl, but that's just for nostalgic reasons only. Right. Yeah. You know, in order to stay relevant, you you know, and and to be able to keep up with what's going on, 
you got to be more efficient with what no, of you're course, doing. Of course, of course. You know, so knowing how to use controllers and all of that stuff and teaching these kids. When I'm teaching them, I'm really teaching myself because I, I you know, I got access to all these new, com the Rev 7 comes in, I got right. the Rain 1 comes in, the SRT comes in, yeah. oh, the RXD, like I, 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 RX2. I, get, I got access to all this stuff and I'm practicing on these new controllers. Of course, yeah. In order to, to still be able to work and make good money, you have to be... Versatile. Yes. Yeah. So, yes, while as a, as a traditionalist, I would love to say, yeah, I would play vinyl, but at this point, I don't give a fuck. I got everything and then some, you know, in my library, and right, right, I still right. do it on Serato vinyl. Right, right. The only people that fucking complain... Are the people that can't afford to buy Serato still? <laughs> <laughs> they say, "Oh yeah, right, give me vinyl any day week." All right, you got it. Right. You just That's don't a lot want to fucking money pay. Yeah. You don't want to pay the thousand, fifteen hundred dollars for the mixer. You don't want to pay two thousand for your Mac. I got it. Don't worry about it. Right. I ain't mad at you. Right. right. You know, but but you know, like forty fives, DJs. You know, DJs play the forty fives. Oh, I, I love to watch that. I can watch those sets all day. Yeah. They have a joint in New York called Mobile Mondays. Yes, that's with um misbehavior. Misbehave. Well, she she she's come through there. That's Natasha Diggs. Yeah. That's Jess Blaze. That's Breakbeat Lou. Yeah. That, that, that's all of that. And yes, I I love to watch other people play it. But I'm not gonna go home and say, oh my god, this guy played awesome 45 set. Let me pull out my 45. <laughs> well, not even that. You gotta go find them too. <laughs> no, right? no, but I do have them accessible. I just for what? For right. what? I open up my laptop. All right. When I'm done, I close it. Yeah. So, <laughs> on the radio, on your, on your radio now. Are you on the radio I, now? I, I do radio, yes. Uh, Destroy uh, is on Shade, uh, Shade, 45, Shade 45, Sirius XM. Right. Yep, yep. He's got a new show coming out okay. called Control Alt Destroy. Yeah. So I'm one of his featured DJs for the show. Okay. Uh, shout I do out to that. Destroy. He does that uh, show off your gems, I think it yes. is. Yes. Uh, uh, shout awesome out to Destroy show. on that, yeah. And, and, and a lot of the stuff that I do, uh, to be honest, is, is, is online shit. Like, right. you know, the, yeah. just the teaching... Doing the streaming, like I've I've been doing this shit, like you know when people talk about that, people started broadcasting when fucking the the pandemic happened. Yeah, but that also exposed mm -hmm. everybody. Right. I was doing it already, so to me it was nothing. Right. D Nice was the one that caught that that, that, that got that, the torch yeah. and ran with it. Yeah. Can't be mad at that, you right. know what I'm saying? Because anybody would have jumped in that position. Yeah, of course. At any level, I still was maintaining. I was still doing Be Real TV. I was still able to get a check. Yeah. Like, you know, like, accounts. again, those Twitch accounts and IG, they pay you. Yeah, absolutely. If you know, if you're about your business, like, you got to figure out ways, you know, there's new hustles now. Yeah, yeah. So, I, you see me doing them belly cam mm. fucking videos every day on Instagram. Yep. They pay you for that. Yeah. They pay you for your views. Mm -hmm. I get a check every month. That's dope. It helps. It's not... Mm -hmm. Not that you're going to me living like fucking Junebug over here. <laughs> but, you know, I, it gets enough that I get to go stand in that room type shit. Right, right. Like, you know, that, that, that that's a look, man. And that's kind of like where I'm at now. Yeah. You know, now I'm DJing for a dance freestyle artist. Mm -hmm. uh, still traveling DJing. Right. Still with Cypress. Yep. You know, this year w was, was the year that I was really looking to kind of fade into the woodwork. Okay. Because as a DJ, my heroes who are still playing... The younger generation doesn't know or appreciate them. Right. Respect them, yeah. and they and they look at them and they snicker. They're like, "Oh, this nigga's fucking sixty years old and he's still doing this." But yo, that, he he laid down the foundation. Yeah, right. I'm. You know, I love this culture. I I love it. Like, you don't understand. I, I I've lost friendships. I've lost relationships. Yeah, everything has been about this culture. I think and, we all have, man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. How many um radio stations you ran through? <laughs> all right. The one story, there would be no Hot 97 okay. if there was not a Nettie B. Swift. Okay, not okay. Right. let's go. Right. Let's hear this. Let's hear this. Right All right, here. here we go. This goes back to mm -hmm. SOS days. So before right. 90, Hot 97 was 103.5, was it? It was 103.5. It yeah. was a freestyle station. They yes. kind of took over that KTU market. Right, right. right. <laughs> Uh, we gonna get we gonna get saucy. Let's go, now. let's go. Hold on, we what bottle are we breaking for? <laughs> <laughs> bottle right there. What's up? <laughs> so you don't gotta drive. Don't worry about it. Yeah, right. You got you. <laughs> they, 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 <laughs> so they would come to the store and do in stores with freestyle artists. Okay. They used to have this guy Ricky Ricardo. Yes, okay. Radio Remember, yes. personality. Personality, yeah. yes. Yeah. So he was like that guy, and the thing is, I never knew radio 
Like, you know, when, when you hear people on the radio, you don't see their facial expressions, all of this. Yeah, no. This guy, I'm hearing, I'm saying, wow, his voice is amazing. Right, right. He he came to the store, and, you know, he I caught him in the bathroom going a couple of times. You know, now, again, where I come from, if you're going to the bathroom more than once, and I ain't seen you drink not one bottle of water, <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a little thing thing going on. Right, 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 right. It's called the white. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. So, you know, yeah, yeah. he was talking to this chick in the bathroom. So when he came back out, I was doing my thing. I, I can't, you know, to, to, to be honest about your life and what you've done and way, how you've gotten to, you got to be all the way around. I can't be a subject to say, uh, I didn't do drugs back in the days. Right, right. We had different kind of money. Niggas who smoked <laughs> weed could afford weed. Anybody right. who did the other stuff could afford the other stuff. Right. I was on that side. Right, right. So, you know, I caught, you know, it takes one to know one. Of course. So when I saw him, I was like, hey, try this. <laughs> He went in there, he got stuck. He didn't come out the bathroom for like an hour. Damn. I thought he was taking a shit. And, that, and it was the type of shit that you was going to take a massive shit. So he didn't come out. When he came out, the day was over. And he's like, yo. And I'm like, I'm seeing his eyes is all geeked up. He's like, yo, what the fuck His lips that? are sticking to his gums. I would do that right now, but the way my teeth are working. <laughs> and and, and I, I was like, holy shit. I got him. So he was like, yo. What are you doing tonight? And can you get more of what you got? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. He was like, come down to Hot 97. So I went down there. All right. And this motherfucker, I, I, he was showing me back then they would use carts, you know, music carts. They would put them in order. Yep. And that's yep. kind of like how they played music. Yeah. And this nigga was like, yeah, you got that stuff? Yeah. This was coming out of my own pocket. I had, up until that point, I never paid for that shit. It was always given to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was buying it to take it there to him. And, and okay. I, I, you know, taking like an eight ball worth of shit. Right. He would go to the bathroom. He'll come back and... Oh, oh, oh. The yeah, whole that's when you know it was good. Down. When you know and, the and shit the was is, good. you're watching him, and then you're watching my radio talking. I'm 97 here. And like, you see this, and I'm like saying to myself, this is what goes on. Yeah. Like, I'm saying to myself, my God, this is life. It's the late night show. So, <laughs> he's doing this, right? And... and I, you know, at that time, I was rolling with uh, a big-time producer who I'll leave his name out of it. Right. But they used to give us reels. Like, when they would do something yep. fresh out the studio, yep. you get the fucking reel. Yep. They had a reel play there because uh, Frankie Knuckles used to do the house a, mix. a house mix there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They had a set laid out in one of the booths. Okay. Ricky went to the bathroom, and I knew this shit was like that, 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 that fish scale, that fucking bobcat go wave. Johnny yeah. Depp fish scale when he, he said he couldn't feel his face type shit. Right, right. He went to the bathroom and didn't come back out. Now at the time, like before, it would take a long time. Like Eddie, just make sure this goes off, whatever. Right. I didn't do that this time. This time I went to the other room. I, I put the level up. I put the turntable on. It was a song called "Pick It Up" by Shaggy, of Freeze Records. My man, I don't know, says his name. Kenny Dope had just fucking did it, so I played it. Okay. They used to have a phone there, like, you know, when people would call in, and it would have all the lines on the one phone. The phone lines lit up. Okay. I, I played one more record at the time. I'd be lying. I just remember Pick It Up. Right. He came out, and then they used to have, like, a, a, a phone there that would be the higher-ups. That was, like, was a back phone the, type The warm shit. line. So that shit was going off. I'm like, Ricky, Ricky. He comes out the bathroom. What are you doing? What are you doing? Like at this point, he he wants to curse me out, but his lips are stuck to his gums, <laughs> so he can only formulate certain words. No, what the fuck to say? He said, hey, no. "What are you doing? <laughs> Do it." <laughs> so we got the cards back on. Right. He picked up the phone, and all I just seen was the fucking sweat, and he's there like, like I thought he was gonna fucking pass out. Right. Right. It turns out to be the best phone call that ever happened because there was then that they decided that whatever we just did, yeah. we got to do it again. So now Ricky's coming to the store, doing it in stores. I'm going there to 197, and he would play a record at a time. And then they gave him a slot of like a half hour on Fridays okay. that he's doing from like 11 to 11.30. Mm -hmm. It was a slot of time right before they were going to the mix shows. Okay. And he would play hip-hop records, and he let me get it off. I couldn't, like, I couldn't be Eddie B. Swift at that time. I was just playing records, but I was playing hip-hop on there. Right. Then, finally, it was like, all right, we're going to make this official. We're changing the format to the whole station. Okay. We're going from dance music. 
we're going to go to hip hop and R&B. All right. Okay. At that time, there was two people up for that job. Me and Chuck Chillow. Okay. Chuck Chillow was fresh off of getting fired from fucking BLS. BLS. Yeah. And, you know, I was the fresh face. I was the one that was getting the clubs. I had just did a night with him, and he got mad when I got on. The whole place turned up, and, you know, they treated him like, you know, like whatever. Right, right. So we also were in competition for the same jobs. At that time, Strictly Rhythm, which was a house label. House label, yeah. Uh, was was starting to do hip hop. They did Fat Wax Records. Right. Prior to that, Gladys Pizarro was working at Nervous. Okay. This is right before they signed the, Black Moon. Right, right before the okay. hip hop section right. came up. So I had started working for Gladys. Gladys said, Eddie, I'm going to Strictly Rhythm. Right. Come with me over there. Okay. You know, and, and what I was going there was to originally to work for Chuck Chill Out because he was going to be the A&R okay. or whatever have you. Right. When I got over there, they were fucking just sold on my energy it was like, oh, forget, fuck, shit. we're going with Eddie. Right. And I ended up getting that job. Chuck didn't get the job. Okay. So now here's Hot 97, and this is staring us both in the face. Yeah. I, I, I My confidence made me believe I had the upper hand. Right. But he's Chuck Chill Out. Of course. Fucking legend. No, no, legend, right, yeah. right. Whatever it is. From Hot whatever. 97. Yeah. I'm not Hot 97. Um, no, 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 KSFM. KSFM, KSFM, KSFM. BLS. BLS. The BLS. You know, you think about hip-hop DJs. He's Chuck one of the Chilla. pioneers. Right. Yeah, yep. So at that time, you know, I, th- th- these guys, I'm going to leave their name out because I'm just going to say some foul shit. You know, hip hop back in the day, uh, in general, their lifestyles were not like now. So you see a person who's gay now, is ex- is it acceptable right. as you drinking a bottle of water? Like it right. doesn't make anything. Right. Back then, it wasn't like that. Yeah. So the people that were in charge, yeah. you know, were, 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 were flip side. Right. I went up there. And again, my energy is different. I go in there, I had a Sergio Tacchini suit. Hence the, my Joe Pesci. I was going to say that again. It's, it's the, yeah, he, he, I went up there like that. I had the LL Cool J look, the shit, my, up to my kneecap, all of that. Chuck was downstairs in the lobby in a suit and tie. Uh, when I came down from that interview, my face said it all. Right. And he went up there, and I, I sell this fucking to this day. And, and I don't give a fuck. He went up there and... and Conversation was started. How do you get a kid who's not black to do black music? Right. That was it. That was my my run. So at that time, I was playing a club called Two Thousand, which was up in the Heights. Okay. And the night that I took off to do that interview, they had Googie was the promoter, mm-hmm. and they had Flex playing there. Okay. That night was the night that Flex was introduced into that whole thing. So now. It's me and Flex. All right. I was, I mean, hindsight now, you see what it is now, but right. at that time, I was making more money as a DJ and traveling, all of that. Yeah. That radio, for me at that time, would have been a step down. Yeah, at it's least. like a hinder. You know, that, that, that was my stupidity. Like, you know, right. again, not thinking about, you know, the long the run. Life the long or, run. Yes. Yeah. I'm thinking about the, the, the sprint, not the marathon. Right. So, you know, again, and Flex had the experience of, of, Backing up Chuck, yeah. backing up Reddit, you right. know, at Kiss yeah. and at BLS. Right. So his name came in the forefront, and they said, you know what? They, they went to the safe route. Right. When Flex tells a story, he said, oh, I didn't show it to the meetings. It was ne- after that meeting with, with Chuck Chillout, there was never a meeting again. I wasn't allowed in the building. They stood away from me. Right. They stood away from me because, again, they didn't want, it, they didn't want that to, to be the... The look. The beginning that that, that yeah. station got. Right. So, you know, they went with what they did. And you know what? Everything happens for a reason. Of course. Because of that, I was afforded the opportunity to go play overseas. Right. And I started doing shit like that. I wasn't a local DJ. I wasn't playing in my fucking hood. Right. Like, I was out there. Yeah. I've, I've been to Germany. I've been to France. I've been to all these places to, to play music. Yeah. And, and, and the money was fucking lucrative. Right. Like, you know, again, like... When people would say, oh, you know, what do you think about the pay? On a s- slow night in the 90s, $2,000 was, was your pay. Right. Now, we're talking about yeah, DJ right. from 9 yeah, yeah. p.m. to all 4 night. in the morning. Yeah, right. the whole right. night. But, yeah. you know, that, that's a slow night, $2,000. So those are always those paydays. Now that's that's Camillo pay. That's, you know, all of these guys, what they right. get in locally. Right. So, right. you know, that that was what the pay was. Radio, I think they were paying $100 for a night. Yeah. You know, to me, you know, I, I'm saying, 
Oh, no, get the fuck out of here. Like, you know. Yeah, it's not. I didn't, I didn't understand the impact. Yeah. You know, until, you know, years later, it should happen. But I, I was never salty about that. The only thing is they never invited me back to none of the Mixed Master Weekends. Because then Tony Touch became the, the, the Hispanic face in okay. hip-hop. Right. And deservedly so. He, right. He put in his time and his work and, yeah. you know. Yeah, absolutely. It just wasn't in the cards. Yeah. Right. So how, how was it feel, you know, when you did the rain, the DJ 72? How'd that come about? Oh, I'm in California at NAMM. Okay. And uh, Mel Starr was supposed to do a, a showcase for them. Okay. Mel got called to do a gig in Los, uh, Los, Las Vegas. All right. So he left and the, the, the people were scrambling. It's like, yo, what the fuck? Like Mel. And <laughs> all of a sudden, one guy said, yeah. Eddie's here. And he says, get Eddie, get Eddie, because this guy goes to a million records in like fucking minutes. Right. So they was like, look, Eddie, this is, these are the, so they gave me the key points about it. They were like, all right, this is what this button does. This is what, and since the Rain series came out, like going back to the 57, right. I never touched my laptop. I learned you had the scroll buttons, the load buttons, right. the cue points, everything was there. I wouldn't, I would see people do that on the laptop and I'm like, why? You do all the shit for the mixer. Right. So I kind of like, you know, I, I was already built into that machine. Okay. They was like, look, these are these are uh, turntables just without the needles. When I first touched them, the first thing I did was look for the needle. Yeah, so it's a muscle memory type thing. <clears throat> so it took me probably like 30 seconds mixing right. the first three records. And the room had dead and out because Beat Junkies was doing something at Dave and Buster's and they had all the celebrity DJs in there. Okay. The room cleared out. Yeah. When I got on the set, there was probably 30 people in there in this room, held about a thousand something. Yeah. I look down, I look up, and it's fucking the whole room is packed. And they're watching me, and I'm looking at me on the screens. And, okay. You know, I'm like saying, oh, holy shit. Right. Wait a second, though. We say he's at, play that shit real quick while he played. Okay, that routine right there. That, I didn't do that Was routine. That routine, no? No, I didn't do that routine. I, that came about later, so because that, that, it's, it's an ad part to do the story. Right. I was just going running through records. I was fucking slamming records, but I was going through them. You know, I was BPM and shit. I, I went down my whole fucking list. I played about 60 records in like less than 10 minutes. Okay. So it was the look. I was showing them the scroll. I was showing them the cue points. I was going back and forth, and, and that's what they wanted to show. Okay. So because of that, the next day, uh, Chris from from In Music was like, "Eddie, what's your address?" Yeah, oh, I'm gonna send you a pair. Hmm. Sure. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Sure enough, when I got back to New York. I had a pair waiting for me. Dope. Dope. Man, yeah. Don't forget, Rain. You know, this yeah, is Rain, a podcast you know for I mean? DJs. Yeah, you know, you know, we love little toys too. <laughs> in there. I, 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 yeah. When I got we're, that, we're I was on display. Like, <laughs> and and this is you know again the time where, again. I, I I like to think of myself as a person, not not so much of an innovator, you know. But I tend to see things before they happen. Okay. You know, and when when Instagram and Facebook started letting you post more than fifteen second videos, yeah. You know, everybody was doing their typical shit. Right. I had gotten a GoPro camera. Okay. I would put it on my head though. Yep. And I would say, I want to see it from this perspective. So all you seen was this shit. Yep. Yep. And my head knock is heavy when I'm DJing. So then I put it on the chest cam. Yeah. And I started doing that, and then I would put the videos out, and orga organically, yeah. I have never paid for my views or likes or anything. My numbers started going up, and they would notice that. And you know, key to sponsorship, show them that you, that you deserve it. Don't tell them that you're a dope DJ. Don't give a fuck. There's a million dope DJs out there. Yeah, you see the shittiest DJs getting those fucking free products. Why? Because of their hustle. Because they go in there. Because they know how to work the system. Fucking, it's all about the numbers. Yeah. All about the numbers. Once that's the it. analytics, yeah, the black and once white. They start saying, you know, that's yeah. the business side of things. Yeah. Where, the numbers. You know, now that's when they start seeing stuff like that, they be like, okay, this guy averages three thousand views. Don't 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 look at what the likes. The likes are not telling of the actual video. Right. It's how many people are viewing it. And if you're getting a hundred likes, but you're getting four thousand views, four thousand people seen it. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? And that's what they look at. That's where if you look at, you see insights and all of that, that's accessible to anybody. Yeah. So they get to see these things. 
So they was like, oh, this guy's doing numbers. He's doing numbers. And, and he does B-Real TV. And I seen it. He does this. And he got an angle where the camera's on the top. And you see the turntable. We're like, right. you get to see the smack. You see the rain name. You see this. And, and they was like, oh, this is, this is what it, we're right, going right. to. So, again, they would make sure I had, I was updated on my gear. Dope. They, they made sure I didn't play nothing Pioneer at the time because Pioneer is their chief right. rival when it right. comes to this stuff. And, you know. It, 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 it is what it is. I don't use it anymore. Yeah. <coughs> now, I'm using the phase. I'm okay. using uh, the Rev 7 right. and all of that because the game is kind of changed now. Of course, yeah. But, you know, that that's kind of like how it happened. But so Rain, before I left them, they, you know, they dropped 72. They was like, look, we got DJs from all over the world showcasing 72 seconds of a routine. Now, my <laughs> fucking days of... of Battle DJ is gone. Yeah. I can act it real good. I can do a <laughs> scratch and get over. I'm not gonna sit there and do a 20 click orbit flare. You know, <laughs> I'll give you like a good six stabs on my left hand. Right. I can chirp with my right hand and keep it moving. That. Yeah. So, you know, again, I can play the part real good. Right. So they was like, yo, you do something. So I was like, hmm. That brew had yeah routine. I did that as a mistake. I did that during the Puerto Rican Day Parade. <laughs> Yeah. And that, and then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try to do that there, man. When they put it out, and they put it out to a wider market. Yeah. You know, it, it, it didn't break millions of views and all of that, but the people who saw it, or the Appreciate same people it. in my inbox, it. they was like, yo, we need to see this. We need more of this. We need more of that. And that kind of opened up or reopened up my mixtape lane. Right. That I had left prior to that. Right. So let's play that shit one more time. Let it rock. Let it rock for a little bit. Let's see. If I pretend I'm like, don't listen to the real. <laughs> In that video, I didn't have on my glasses, or, or did I? I don't have glasses on, though. I, I'm telling you that I'm a blind DJ. <laughs> I can't see shit. My letters on my computer are like this fucking... You got to turn up the font. <laughs> like shit. my font on my screen? Like that shit. It, 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 they're like as big as his letters on his fucking shirt. I can, yo, I couldn't see nothing that day. I'm staring intently at that. Like my, I look coked up. I look coked up <laughs> doing the video. That's dope, man. Very dope, 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 man. Yeah. Those, are, those are the type of things you're supposed to do as a DJ. You know what I mean? You know, bend it a little bit, twist it, and, and make it your own type of deal. So dope, man. Oh, so yeah. See, that's that, to see that. So to go back to the question, do I prefer turntables to t technology? Yeah. That should be the question, not so much control. Final, final to technology, control. because I still use turntables. It's right. the mixes. The things that you can do with today's gear yeah. is there. Everybody got. We see the fucking the fake DJing by, you know, the guy should with not, the mask. Plugged in with the mask. Yeah, right? the shit that don't be plugged in. Right. Or the new kid who said, "Oh, I did a mashup where Stevie is talking to Biggie," and and those are the biggest acting jobs. But the, <laughs> the equipment that they're using allows you to do that. Right. So I put myself on front street. You like it, you like it. You don't like it, you don't like it. And, and I go ahead and I use it, and yeah. you know, it, it works for me. Right. So, so fast forward now to um to 2022, 2023. What freestyle artists are you DJing for now? Right now, I rock with uh, Sapphire. Sapphire. Okay. And Sapphire. Before Sapphire. Before Sapphire, I, I came in with Lizette Melendez. Oh, okay. Uh, and then I would do uh, George Lamont. Okay. And uh, K Seven. Okay. And, and uh, Coro. But right now, you know, it's it's been Sapphire. All the legends, all the legends. Uh, yeah. Well, they've been doing this shit for thirty fucking years. Right, <laughs> like, right, right, they're right. all legends at this point. Yeah, yeah. classic, classic joints. So, like, he's, dope so he already said he don't have no records no more. No, so no. He don't got record collection. <laughs> no, so, no, well, no, no. See, I, I didn't say he got, that. He got I, I don't some. have some the collection. Like I got what you got. I got, I got my little. Hey, your, I got that favorites. record over here. Like I right. kept like my first record, Bay City Rollers, Saturday Night. I still have. My first that was, so that was the first record you ever purchased? Album-wise. Okay. My next album I bought after that was Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince. He's the DJ. I'm the rapper. Where'd you get him from? Where'd you buy him at? Rock and Soul. Okay. Okay. Rock and Soul. That, that, that was the record store. Like, there, there was, it was Beach Street. Yeah. Until I started working at SOS, DJ Specialty. Right. Uh, Music Factory. Yep. But, you know, I... You you when when you were coming up, you wanted Rock and Soul was the spot. The spot, yeah. yeah that was I just bought a gift card for my my niece. She likes 
freestyle music. Right. You know, she's only 12 years old. So for Christmas, I bought a gift card to rock and soll. Oh wow! Okay. So for that, they'll go buy. Well, sure at least she probably buy one vinyl at least, probably maybe two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, no, they, they, the they, they're reasonably priced. I'm not gonna give them free ads. Huh? <laughs> Me and Sharon ain't vibing right now. Let me stop. <laughs> Sharon, Shasta we can ride soul. though. Yo, Sharon, we vibe. You Sharon, know I, mean? I forgot. Like, no, you should be sponsoring this show. TrueStory.com. <laughs> Shout out to Rocket Soul, man. They got a lot of my money, man. Yeah, I, me too. A lot they of got money. a lot of people's money, and, and yeah. they still do things, man. They just had a Christmas party. Dope. That was dope. Who's there? You, everybody. Evil D, Diamond, uh, Grand Wizard Theodore, DJ Fame, uh, Tony. T Did Tony show up this year? Mel Star, mm -hmm. uh, Keith Shockley. Okay. Everybody who's anybody, they always right. come out for this. So how, once a year, right? It's a holiday mix. I mean, it's holiday a holiday. It's, it's a holiday party. They right. they come and you know they do, they do sets over there for the people in the store, people watching online. You know, everybody has their favorites, and Yo. you know there was always well, there's always that one that's, DJ. That's on our calendar for 2023. Rock or Soul, we need to be at this Christmas yes. party. Yes. Oh, that that yeah, that is yeah. a very doable thing. We're, we'll come with Eddie. Yeah. yeah facts. Hey. I gave I went to, I gave him my slot. I was told I'm gonna play before Evil D, but I'm there. Hey, we're gonna put you on later. We're gonna put you later because we know what you're gonna do. We would rather have you later. All right, no problem. But as I'm there, all the DJs are showing up, and now the 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 big dogs are in the building. Uh -huh. So now once they start getting on, everybody, every DJ, this is still a competition at the end of the day. At yeah, no matter what, it doesn't matter. We can be the best of friends, all, all three of us. Day, but when you but get on that me, set, but put me in a, a room and you're there and you're there. Yeah. Oh, I'm not giving a fuck about what y'all do. Not. I'm going. My whole purpose Absolutely. is to make sure I stand out. Yeah. So when I leave, they're gonna be like, "What the fuck are they gonna do? What, how, what are they right, gonna do right. to, to you know that's gonna that's but that's my confidence." That's my arrogance. That's my no, attitude. And, and it's a, Nothing it's wrong a, with that. No, it's a friendly competition. Yeah, right, it's like, no, it, well, it, it, yo, when and, you and it's old. like you talking to yo Eddie. Think he got me, yo. He think yeah. he, he think when he you're killed older. It. Watch when I get on. I'm gonna kill that <laughs> shit. See, but yeah. that's the whole thing. That was the theme this year because it was right. one DJ that everybody was waiting for, and he came there and okay, it didn't go well. Okay, it didn't go well, and Mel Star went on after him. Okay, and Mel Star. Started with the record that he finished playing last. He played a George Benson mix. Okay. And then Mel played his version, and okay, it was a significantly different. And at that time, he he broke out the store, and they started talking saucy. <laughs> I, I just watched from afar, man. And Nothing wrong with that, man. Yeah, it, this was a sauce. This was the sauciest. Holiday party day van there. <laughs> Extra sauce. Extra oh, yeah. saucy. Extra sauce and smelly. Y'all DJs, y'all too old to be smelling that bad, but that's another story for another day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's keep that. You know. When DJs arms smell like blimpy sandwiches. Oh, damn. My God, they've made wonderful declarations of damn. inventions called deodorant. Damn. They even got spray. Then, that to get a you know you showed your age with that blimpy sandwich shit, Yeah, I know, too. right? Ain't no more blimpies all right, at all. First off, because y'all got Firehouse and Jimmy John's and all of yeah, that. Man. Hey. I come I, for the era of blimpies. I, I remember blimpies. I come man. for the era of the smashies. Where you oh, go no, to the yeah, store, course, you they, get a banco mantequilla. Uh -huh. If not, you get the bread and then they fill. They throw some eggs in there. What about the, you know, can I get a dollar worth of cheese? <laughs> hey. Half a dollar hey. worth of ham. Hey. And those 25 cent rolls right there. I didn't get spoiled. Till and where's, your, and where's your mayonnaise package at? <laughs> so get that shit. I didn't get spoiled with, with, with that kind of shit until I got here. Once I got here, you know, I was with my kid's mom at the time. And yeah. She was doing a Denny's circuit working over there. So yeah. that, that, that changed my whole life there. What, Denny's? Yeah. I love Denny's. 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 <laughs> right I here. swear to Denny's every, Yo, every he, time I go he, out. He won't come home until he have Denny's. Denny's or Waffle House. Either. Well, yeah, I'm man. trying to go there. Well, uh, We're going there tonight? I, I hope. But, you know, okay. again, I got I to gotta catch that flight. First thing in the morning, man. So I drop you up by four o'clock. I went by you three hours early. <laughs> you can sleep on the flight, man. I have to sleep on the flight. Let, let me tell you something. There's not no flight short or long enough that I can't. I have to sleep because once they feel like turbulence, my leg starts doing the hammer. Oh man! <laughs> Whoever's sitting next to me feels the yeah, yeah, yeah. We we'll, we'll go down four thirty six. You know what I'm saying? We'll find the Denny's. Yeah. Oh, dude, just right there. See, I still uh, this is my first time playing the spot, so I don't know exactly where it's at. Next to the airport. Right next to the airport. Hey, yeah. But you know what? Everybody said, yeah, it's right next to the airport. It's right next to 50. Meanwhile, it should be fucking no, no, no. Five it's right, miles it's, away. It's right next to right the airport. Right down the block. Right. 
Yeah. Two, three, like, three lights. Top three, three lights. They asked yeah. me, hey, where your mom lives at? I said, oh, yeah, she lives at Semron. Yeah, Semron. Same, you you know, opposite sex. But she lives all the way by fucking full sale. <laughs> you don't tell that shit. Castleberry, whatever the I didn't tell you that's where we going after this. Yeah. <laughs> Facts. But, all right, so you, everybody knows about that blend battle or whatever it is. Um, yes. Which, which blend we going with? The, um, that, that face off um, battle, the one with the, the CNN? J, J, the, the J Boogie battle that Ted put together, the Blend for Ben battle series. Right, right. That's right. a CNN with um, everyday people. That, to tell that story real quick, that was supposed to be initially Ted Smooth versus Mel Star. Mm. Okay. They had put out a product right before the pandemic. And they, they I remember this day vividly. They did it at 149th Street. Two people that went to that party had died from COVID. Oh, mm. man. Rest in peace. This is one of the first things. So that never got off the ground. Right. During the pandemic, you know, we were all looking for ways to get out. Ted was like, yo, my man owns a body shop. Mm -hmm. Let's go over there. And, and before that, me and Jay were just talking about putting out a product together. Like okay. my blend versus your blend. Right. Not a battle, but, you know, a battle. Right. So when we told Ted, I said, Ted, host it. He was like, nah, let's do the battle. Now, it was in a different battle because Jay Boogie, as dope of a DJ as he is, he does production blends. Okay. Production blends are Pro Tool or Ableton driven. Right. You're sitting there and lining up. That's, you know, again, I come from an era where I did shit live. Right. So, you know, Ted sold us on the idea, you know, Ted is, is Vince McMahon. <laughs> in this situation right? and he got the people interested like you know by the time we come up I wanted to beat Jay up and I love this kid he's fucking sending shots at me as an old man doing old age home fucking videos <laughs> you got his son a pay per view fight oh man so up until the battle I kept saying I'm gonna smoke this dude there's no way he can fuck with me he's gonna sit there and gonna stare at me playing his blends at me while I'm doing them and, I, and at that time I had figured out how to key lock and, and pitch Pitch lock, so you know I was taking a Lisa Lisa record that is normally one fifteen, mm -hmm. mixing it with Mob Deep, mm -hmm. right. that is like fucking ninety four. Right. So like, how did I pull that off? And I'm doing this shit live, the right. whole set. Incredible boy, Chief Voter Pro, yep, Green Lantern of the judges, yep. And I'm saying there's no way. I'm saying to myself, Incredible boy, he's gonna see it for what it is. Fucking Jibo again. Jibo is on the fence because blend shit with his thing. Right. He doesn't care because he does pre-production blends. Right, right. You know, Green Lantern was the wild card. Yeah. So when when it was supposed to be ten rounds. Okay. The first round, he starts off with a like a tribute to one of the guys that used to be down in his crew, and he was mixing top billing, and you know, again it was a pre-production fucking blend. Right. He had his mask on the whole time, and he's just standing there behind the controller. Yeah. Looking at me. And I'm like saying to myself, this motherfucker's gonna do this whole day. I'm gonna fucking smoke him. Right. I did my blend, and the fucking judges said, one zip, J Boogie. I said, the fuck out of here. I'm thinking I'm gonna 10 zip. Right, right. All of a sudden, all my ideas I had in my head went out the window. Yep. I'm like saying, oh, I got, I, I got desperate. Yeah, switch it up, yeah. And I went and I started pulling out like my. Uh, Charlie Brown with my Lucini mix. Okay. I pulled out my big shot with hip hop. Like I started going to shit that I've done before. Yeah. And again, I kind of evened it out. When we were getting to the later rounds, it was fucking eight eight. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. If I lost the next, if I lost the next round, I ran out of blends. Okay. And I had a whole folder of shit that I did. I had Annie up, a blend ready to come. Like I had all this other shit. I had no intentions. Like, who's going to pull out Arrested Development? Or, yeah. Who's going to pull out the dudes that made Tennessee right. and, and do that? That mix I made up on the spot. I, I, I want to hear that a little bit. Hold on. Because I seen this. Yeah. I yeah. saw this shit. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. whoa. And the thing was, yeah. everybody's face was, and they heard it like, oh, this is lame for the rest of the development. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I dropped the beat, fucking Norris DJ's in the house, Butchrock. Butchrock, okay. He made that moment happen. When I did that shit, everybody was like, what the, what the fuck? fuck just happened? Yeah. And then Butch jumped up in the video, and again, everybody knows Butchrock is Norris DJ. Yep, yep. So that made the moment. I fucked up on that blend. Because, like, if you watch the actual video, yeah. right before the, I had it timed out that when 
uh, speech is verse finish, you was going to hear CNN say, y'all don't want to fuck, fuck with, with us. All right. The, I pressed the wrong key button. Okay. And I, I didn't take the loop off, and it fucked up. But they had saw enough that they was like, yo, the yo, blend was enough. crazy. Yeah. The reaction. And then I was like, the 10th blend, I didn't have a fucking idea what I was going to do. <laughs> None. <laughs> and, 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 and it was funny. I opened up the folder, and it's staring me in the face. Love is a battlefield. Yo, and the Jay Z record. I'm about to flip the table right now. Yo, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, my hands are staring. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. Hold on. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Play that shit. Yo, play that. Let, shit. Me, let it play. Let Yo, it play. Fuck it. Let me play. Yo, this shit right here, Eddie. I got. <laughs> look, I'm getting fucking chills, yo. Because I'm a blend love. I'm a blend DJ, man. This shit right here, yo. Just don't I, flip the table. Don't flip yeah, the table right now. I'm about to flip this shit right now. <laughs> I feel uncomfortable when I hear this shit now. What? You crazy? You play this shit um, live in um in Tampa. Yo. Yeah. And I was like, Whoa. yo. This shit right here. When that beat drops. See now, let, let, I, I, I want to bring up a point now. Blending in general is a beat and a, a acapella. But um, so I tell people all the time, just because two songs mix doesn't mean they blend. No, no, you're absolutely right. You know what I mean? So to me, it was like, the, what am I gonna do that's gonna fuck me different? The build up. This was a build, the build up. up. Yeah. yeah. So when the beat drop. <laughs> When I did that, that's you that understand. gas face shit. Yo, that shit right there. That's when, when I, you rolling down fucking Third Ave or you on a Hunt Twenty Fifth Street. Windows right all here. down, Yo, sun roof up. You know it could I mean? be cold as fuck. It, it could be, be snowing. Cold as fuck. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The the, the 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 again, I made a mistake on that blend. If you watch the whole thing, and the second verse is when when I'm losing control. Like I went into that again, but I walked away from the set. Yeah. Like, cause I he kept talking about Jay Boogie. Yeah, I got the money ball. I got the money ball. Like, I yeah, got yeah. the one yeah, that's gonna die. His that. money ball was fucking rampage. Yeah. Uh, and, and I was like, but I didn't know because he had I, I had to go first. Right. When I did that mix, and again, I people would give me ideas, whatever. Everybody's mix, love is a battlefield, but the original a cappella yeah. had the guitars on it. Okay. So somebody that was like your Ed. He gave me Love is a Battlefield without the guitars. It nope. was, so I was like, fuck, how can I play this? And, and again, it was a mistake. I wasn't supposed to do that. Yeah. I did not have that in my bl to do blends. My, my money ball blend was going to be my Charlie Brown Lucini blend. Have you done, did you do that blend prior to never, that? Never. Or it never. was on the spot? That like, was the first time I did damn, it. Damn, for how'd you get, oh my God. To, to, so, to, to get it to fall on that drop. drop. But, yeah. but again, so the thing is, in, in the Jay Z record, you got to loop it. Okay. So, you know, again, because I know how to activate these things on the 72 mixer. Right, right. I looped it four bars, and then I had it where the beat dropped at a cue point there. So I said to myself, all right, by the time she gets to that, I'll build it up to that. Mm -hmm. And then when she sings, then I'll press the cue point. Right. If I, one second off, it's gonna that's it's a gonna whole different up. mix. Right. I pulled it off, and, you know, again, this is a testament, because, again, the one thing that I do till this day yeah. is I practice. And you know yeah. your equipment. Snowing that, your that, equipment. Yeah. You, you you know, people, again, like, and this is the whole thing, when you ask, what do I prefer, vinyl as, as uh, te te technology? Technology, yeah. Technology is everywhere we go. Yeah. You're not going to go into a club and they're going to have fucking 1200s there. Right. And they're going to have a fucking old rotary. No, they're going to fucking have a 57, a 72, or S9. They're going to have all of that. So if you don't know how to use that, yeah. then... You gotta come off, and that's if you're lucky. If you don't gotta lucky. bring your own if shit. If they got that, shit, some right. of these kids now that I watch and I seen them do it with DDJ SX threes. Yeah, they they the way they flip these shits, I'd be like, wow. And again, these kids are real creative. Yeah. So yes, I learned from today's DJs, seeing how their creativity and how they doing things. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna put my spin on it. Right. The one thing they got out right now that I have not crossed over to is that Serato steps. Yeah. On the stems. Yeah. I haven't crossed over to that. I had it and when it was beta version, I tried it. I didn't like it. It sounded it sounded like bad acapellas. Yeah, but I tell people all the time, I don't I got I got instrumentals and acapellas. I don't need the stems. Well, see, no, but but so but with the stems, you can drop out the bass line. You can drop you can just have the beat. Right. You can you can take the chords, you can take the rhythm section, like they let you break it down. But they were doing uh tractor and virtual DJ were doing that way before. Right, right. So I, I, you know, I linked up, and there again, was a, I, there was an application too. I think it was called Recycle or something like that. There's a bunch of them. Do, you have, you that with, yeah. man, we could sit here. You could say Phonic Mind. You could right. say fucking Melody. 
Excel. Like there's so many D DIY type of, of programs. Right. But again, it, 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 if you got stems, you got it. Like yeah. you know. And, so, if if are there any blend DJs that inspire you? Like you you look to listen to? There's always. I mean, again, in my golden age now, I appreciate a lot of the guys I couldn't stand before. Okay. I appreciate the Ty Boogies. Right. I appreciate the Danny D's of the world. Mm -hmm. I appreciate, you know, whatever it is, like, we, 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 you know, people can have problems with Ted and whatever. I still know Ted, you know, and right. he still, I know the creative side of him. Yeah. Despite right. what others, I, right. I, you know, so yeah, even Jay Boogie, you know, they all inspire me. You know, I, yeah. I everybody pays attention to what everybody's doing. Of course. You yeah. know, and, showing love to all the DJs. Yeah, yeah, but you know, you just can't tell them these days because, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, oh, he's checking out, you're stealing my shit the fuck out of here. Like, right. I'm past that. I'm just, I'm just in fade into the woodwork mode now. Yeah. I'm yeah, just and, doing and, my videos and. Yeah, just concentrating on you. Pretty much. Got to think about the next life because the one thing, and this is important and why we're never going to see. 30 year DJ again. I mean, unless you were slinging dope or anything like that, we didn't put any places of having a 401k right. or shit like that. And that's right. stuff that as we get older as DJs, yeah. you see DJs with fucked up teeth. You see DJs not healthy. And, you know, I'm calling the kettle black. You know, I'm going through a lot of these same issues. But, you know, th this is things that if people prepared themselves, yeah. you know, th th these are important things. Now, DJs are like, you know, after this, what am I gonna fucking be a Walmart greeter now? <laughs> it's, you funny. Know it's funny. Can I see you ever see? It's yeah. funny Fuck you, you say that because I know I know somebody that they told me specifically when they retire they want to be the little old man <laughs> at Walmart. the front of Walmart getting you set up to go do your return. You know how they put the stickers on the shit. Yeah, yeah, the yellow stickers. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm just transitioning myself to teaching because that's one thing that no, that's I, dope. Though. I that's enjoy. Dope. Yeah, and, and the thing is, fuck, fuck these these entitled people. Right. Who want to do that? I, I had a chance to work with a lot of special needs kids. Nice. And that, let me tell you something. If if ever anything has been fulfilling, that has been it. To see a Dope. kid, you know, who you normally wouldn't think that. And right. to see them do the things and see the growth. Man, that 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 shit. That, that, I used to go home like, yeah. wow, like so overwhelmed. Yeah, I would have to make it, You feel like you're making an impact. It's always yeah. about the give back. At the end of yeah, the day, yeah. you can do everything you want, but... When it's over, it's over. Right, right, right. There ain't, ain't going to be no royalty checks coming in. No. You know, unless you produce the hit, yeah. you're not getting any ass cap or residuals or anything like that. Yeah. You better hope you married a, a good situation or, you know, you saved your pennies. And yeah. that is not the case for, that. that is the case for 90% of them. Nobody's done that. Yeah, right. Yeah. If you were stuck in the music decade, what decade would that be? 70s. 70s? Disco and funk. My God. I. What's your go-to disco song? Not YMCA. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we're gonna make a we're gonna make a checklist <laughs> after this show. Nah. Things are not to say. <laughs> Mirror, <laughs> one hand. Looking at my show. YMCA. Nah. Look so, at my show. <laughs> there's records like Funky Town. Okay. Casey and the Sunshine Band. That's right. the way I like it. These are songs that I know that I have these routines to that I can do. That those are my go-to songs. Right. I do a, a, a throwback night in New York on Thursdays so. where I play. Not but seventies, eighties, and nineties, and but most of the time I stay in the seventies and. What 80s. time they close? At one o'clock. Shit, we're gonna miss it. We we'll get there on a Thursday night, like twelve o'clock. <laughs> so we might be able to just pull up. Like, you can pull up. But, pull but up. But he's leaving. Up. He's leaving. Hey, we could, hey. <laughs> nah, then, then, let me we tell you. Go get, you know, we could do. Where's it at? Where, where's the spot at? Uh, two thirty fifth. Uh, it's it's called the rooftop bar. Okay. Two thirty fifth Avenue. That's like like right off of twenty six. But again, yeah. it, but, just, what, you know what we, what we could do after is go get a smashy. They have, oh, hey. <laughs> Whatever works for me. Cheese, the yeah. chopped cheese. Oh, chopped cheese. That, they, that, that spot has a heated igloos on the roof. They have a penthouse. Nice. It's a look. And the crowd in there would not be the crowd that you would think that would listen to that music. Yeah. Right. They look younger than probably our kids. Wow. You know, it's, it's, it's the, the young white kids and, and their 20s and 30s and... <sighs> Shit. Funky Town is the record I would play. That's oh, Funky, Funky Town. Okay. But the 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 edits that I got though, right. everything now my breakdown edits yeah, yeah, that yeah. I'm getting from my boy in Canada, oh man he's been lacing me lovely. That's, That's what separated. See this DJ got fun again 
because everybody's playing the same shit, the same version, the eight bar intros, yep. fucking doing the same mixes. Like yep, yep. you can go through if people have their BPM set up, chances are you're gonna see Whoop D, you're gonna see Dior, you're gonna see all uh, day and night, you're gonna see all these in the same order and everybody's shit. Yeah, same thing with the uh with the Afro Beach joints. Oh. They, everybody's playing the they're not digging. No. For what they're playing in Nigeria or what right, they're right. playing. You know what I mean? The same what used to separate you, know I mean? you from other DJs? Your content, what you had. Right. Well, that's what, shit. What's crazy is now that you say that, um, I tell DJs all the time, because they ask me, yo, let me let me let me copy your folder. I don't let nobody copy my hard drive because that's what makes me me. You understand what I'm saying? I'm about to out myself right now. Yeah. I get asked that all the time. Yo, Ed, let me get a copy of your hard drive. Nah. I got the folders that I give out, and then and the I got the got. folders <laughs> and don't see the day of light to anybody else. Right. I have two different hard drives. No, it, so when you see the blue hard drive come out, know that you're getting shit that you generic, get on franchise. Generic, generic shit. You get shit. on beat junkies and yeah. anything like that. The one that's on this one, it's just like the, 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 the white label shits we used to get Is back in the day. Is that backed up? Right. Huh? Is that backed up, that hard drive? <laughs> Let me tell you something. I got more backups than I probably got drawers. I got like... <laughs> <laughs> 30 hard drives that right. backing up the, the backup, backup. Yeah, on top so. of the backup I yeah. also back up in the cloud so like, you got a big part back in the back in the back in the back in the back yeah you gotta, you gotta do it man <laughs> nah you don't play with that shit yeah. I've I, I seen it happen to a lot of my, my, my DJ brethren that yeah. they didn't back shit up and then they're saying yo Ed let me get your disco files and let me get this and yeah. you know th those situations I would help out to an extent, right? They still won't get the the money load. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I'll help. get them up to speed. Yeah, you know I mean? I'll get them to the point where they, they'll have the basics. They can, right. do, a, they can do a party. Yeah, no, nah, I, I, I don't, they can't I've do had, a festival. Have, they can do a party. They, 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 yeah, you know what I mean, they could do a little something, something. They could get they could get by until they start getting their shit. Up. But, <laughs> yeah, I have people ask me all the time, and I don't, I don't, I don't do it because of the hours I put in, especially recording vinyl that's not out. Or recording an acapella that that you can't find, or or things like that. You know, what yeah, I mean? at the end like, of the day, the same fucking work that we put in to get this shit, you gotta do you it. You can do this shit. You yeah. know, and some people expect you to do that. Like, yo, look, they, they people pay for websites. Like, you know, you can't take for granted just because you're such and such DJ that I'm gonna call Junebug like Junebug. Let me get your thing. Yeah. I have done that before because, again, so as, as you get older, you become more of a situational DJ. D, D, uh, Promoters, managers, club owners will hire you because you play old school or you play dance or reggae right. or you play this. And with the new stuff, I, I'm so out of touch because there's no danceable music anymore. Yeah. Right. They don't yeah. make hip hop dance music anyway. We can't go somewhere. We got to see TikTok fucking TikTok dances. Dances and all that shit. Like, who the we we miss a lot of old records too. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, the original I, record. Unless I'm going to go to a place where the trucker is in there dancing to Treat Him Right or whatever have you. Right. Or oh, the dancing trucker? Yeah. Nobody's <laughs> dancing anymore. You so them? You haven't seen a dancing trucker? It, it's hard to, to, to keep up with that. So, you know, I'll go to my younger cats, you know, and, and I'll be... And they the same way they come looking for them old 90s house records... That used to pop off the Todd Terry shit yeah. that they didn't know the name of, yeah. but they heard it say Batman said, "Let's go." That's and you know that's Bango. That's right. Bang. All right, yeah. let me get your part. Let me get your current party folder. Right. And then I build off of that because, again, if you want to play to 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 this generation, you gotta conform and give them so yeah. much. So no, of course, yeah. If there was one thing you could change in your life, what would it be? Nothing. Everything that has happened in our lives is meant to happen the way it has. From all the bad shit to all the good shit, you know, in order for you to get to where you're at now, you had to have gone through shit. Yeah. You know, I have a drug history. And, you know, while it's not ideal, I have to take ownership to that because that helped mold me to right. what I am now. That right. I know better. And when I see these young cats and, you know, I see them they get mollied up or whatever, I'm not gonna sit there and preach to you like a Jehovah Witness. I'm gonna just tell you, like, yo, yeah. you wanna ha you asking me what happened during my time. I'm telling you, you take it for what it's worth. Right. You know, I I, I wouldn't change anything. I mean, you know, are we in a perfect position of life? We're in we are in as good of a position as we're going to be for putting us where we at. Right. So going back a few years ago, um, you and Frankie Cutlass had a little little beef or a little problem. Um, <laughs> Tell you we digging. So so what was, what was that about? Is it, is everything good now? Or? Fuck out of here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you want me to pull up my phone and start showing you messages? This motherfucker said. Oh, you got Frankie, receipts. You got receipts. You got receipts. Nah, it's, yo. So again, Frankie's one of those dudes, man, that everybody knows who he is. Whatever. When you're spearheading a 
revolution or a movement or something like that, man. Yeah. The one thing that people need to learn at this time in our lives is humbleness. Because the same way you got up there, you can get smacked off that fucking ladder so quick. Yeah. He is doing shows on Facebook. He started doing a freestyle show on Mondays. Yep. It got a look. Yeah. He made a mistake, started getting paid viewers. Okay. Right? You know, because when it should have said 2,000, 3,000 people viewing, but there's only fucking 30 comments going in there, like, all right, do, do the math. It doesn't add up. Right. I know this. I've been doing fucking internet radio since 96. Yeah. You're not doing anything that I haven't seen yet. Right, right. And he's telling everybody, yeah, I do this. I get these kind of numbers. All right. And then uh, uh, another freestyle group was like, hey, what, would you mind doing a set for us? Okay. I always loved freestyle. Always, always like yeah, you know that that's that's my that was my the boy, you came up with that, my with childhood the music. yeah, 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 that's, yeah. That was my childhood. So you know the opportunity to play it like I don't get to do that because I do hip hop. I'm not gonna play freestyle at a Cypress concert, right? Or anything like that. So I was like I, I I would do it. I love to play freestyle. Yeah, yeah. So I did it mm-hmm. on a Monday, not thinking that hey Frankie does a show. He wasn't even on the air at that time, right? But you found out that I did it and the numbers were crazy. And they, but they were legitimate numbers. They weren't okay. fucking thousands. <laughs> it was in the hundreds. But a lot of people that went there to see me watched me on B-Real TV. And then people would find out, oh, Eddie B. Swift's playing freestyle. So then he started po- do- doing some liminal shit. Okay. He started saying, oh, people think they can come on my time and do this. Like, nigga, who are you talking about? And I text him. Right. I was like, nigga, who are you talking about? Right. He didn't say nothing. Then he got saucier. I was like, my nigga, you're not built like that. And the thing was, it became a, 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 a popularity contest because he has his stands and yeah. he also is the purveyor of many a fake profile page. So he'll go on there and he'll he'll pretend that he's a, and again, no disrespect, peace and salute to the Latin kings of the world, but he got he got a fake profile where he's the Latin king where he's throwing, dis, he's throwing shit at you under the Latin king umbrella. Oh, damn. I know those, I, yeah, I that, know real G's when it comes good. to that. Yeah. He's doing shit like that. He was going into fucking girls' inboxes telling them, yo, you know this cokehead motherfucker? <laughs> and this is the nigga calling me cokehead. This motherfucker was working for dope and fucking coke. <laughs> Not even the good shit either. <laughs> so he's telling people, oh, this cokehead. Yo, like, he, he didn't do nothing. I laughed at that. And I was like, my nigga, if we made this about fucking skills, your life is over. You can't tell. Because first off, everybody who knows the history of hip-hop and knows... Where that Puerto Rico whole shit came for. He didn't he he did, he let the system work for him. He didn't do the right thing. He didn't fucking hit up th- those cats and pay them money for, for right. what made him who he was. Okay. You know, but whatever. And then he would, again, you can have a room full of plaques. You know how you get them? You can get them from the artists, the artists themselves. Yeah. Right. Or you can, you can fucking buy them. Buy them. Right. right. Get the money, you can buy them. Because yeah. they use a fucking sample of a word. That fucking Akinelli said for the fucking Drake song that he did with Khaled. Yeah. This nigga bought a plaque saying, yo, thank you. Thank you, Khaled. Get the fuck out of here. Now, question. If I, <laughs> do you play I that? you going to dig this. Do you play that record? What? In your sense? Puerto Rico? Yeah. Why not? It's a, it was a that's fucking... That's classic. That's classic. And not only that, by him saying he plays it, yeah. that's real <coughs> DJ talk. Let, 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 yeah. me, say, let me yeah. say this. I'm not... You know what? Again, DJing is a competition at the end of the day. The era we came up with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was who's better than who? Whose crowd is better than who? Right. Who has the best parties and all of that stuff? Yeah. That shit don't bother me. When you start making shit personal and you're coming at me on personal, like, all right, it's not a fucking secret that I did coke back in the days. You know why I did it? Because it was there. That was part of the culture. It was culture. part of culture. Everybody did it. You're, you know, I'm DJing yeah. six nights out the week, right. working a fucking day job at a record store six nights a week, and doing this all after another, and right. then still trying to maintain, yo, you know, we didn't have Red Bull back in the days. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You didn't have wings. Yeah. You had that fish scale. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It was what it was. And, and, and anybody would talk shit. All the people that smoke good weed, <laughs> That was getting hydro or getting that purple, but paid twenty dollars. Guess what? Coke was like twenty dollars for whatever. It wasn't different. You just fucking hung out with different people. That's it. Yeah. So you know, him yeah, going he out there had the fancy jaws. Yeah, <laughs> the fancy glass. I first thought. Right, right. I told you in the car about that one. Yo, so you know, again, 
He made it personal. <laughs> and the thing was, I was like, all right. I started going after him as a DJ. And there's no comparison. Yeah. Frankie, I, I can stop DJ for 17 years, and I'll still be better than Frankie ever was. <laughs> there's not even a question. I, you want to do it in hip-hop? I'll fuck you up in hip-hop. You want to do it in freestyle? I will fucking out. Like, he's not on my level, on no level. But because he is Frankie Cutlass, yeah. he thinks he can do and say what he wants, and there's no repercussion. And this nigga started saying, I'm stealing this. I'm, doing, I'm like, yo, my nigga, I know where you live. Like, you know, if I was really about that life, th this conversation would have been over. Right, right. I, I would have had an order restraint against me. Because this is the same <laughs> guy that calls cops on, on people when they go looking for him at the clubs because he does the internet gangster shit. Uh. And he tries to roll with street dudes. And those street dudes eventually turn on him too. Yeah. I got no respect for him, man. I, I would have respected him more if he would just left it alone. Yeah. Because I didn't do anything to personally attack him. Because before that day, yeah. I actually thought he was a friend. So what if, what if, um, instead of taking the subliminal shots, what if he would have reached out to you like, yo, Eddie, I'm actually... But that was the thing. I did, I, even after he took that shot at me, right. I texted him like, yo, dude, what's this about? Right. I ain't no money belong to you. <laughs> right, right. What if he would have said, yo, Eddie, I, you, you know, I got a little something popping on Mondays. You know what I mean? Like, but even then, so if I would have, if, if I would have did a set on Tuesday, no, no, a, 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 a set on Monday between the times that he's doing it, right, and playing the same thing, that you know, again, that's like courtesy. You know, like you wouldn't do okay. that okay. to a DJ like that, right. If you consider him a friend, right. But I didn't know because I wasn't following. I got asked to do this. Yeah, I didn't know that the people that asked me to do it used to work for Frankie. And he knew about all of that shit. Ah, okay. So when they put that shit into light, man, and right. then he was also doing some dirtbag shit with chicks, which is how it led me to, to Lizette Melendez. Okay. Lizette was watching shit unfold, and she hit me up. I was like, hey, you know, can you talk? And I, I, I called her, and we started talking. And, and because of the Frankie Cutler situation, yeah, that's what got me down with Lizette. And, you know, again, Lizette, she, she, she was a leader on, on so many fronts because... She was part of that new era of freestyle. Yeah. Right. Where, yeah. you know, right. the beats were driven. driven. Carlos Berrios right. was right. different production. And, you yeah. know, Lizette had the around the way look. You know, yep. she wasn't fluffy, tased the hair. You yeah, know. no, no. She looked like the she chick looked... that be in the corner. She had the curly hair. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, and again, when when we were coming up as DJs, you know, this fucking chick said, you know, I had crushes on all of them. Fuck yeah. Of course. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> chance to work with Lizette. Yeah. Oh, great. And, you know, it's not Lizette of 30 years ago. It's, it's Lizette 2020, but, you know. And she, she's, Where do I sign? No. She's still, she's, she's still, she still looks amazing. Still. No, she, you know what I mean? Yeah, she does. She still puts a, 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 forth a great okay. effort, you know. And she allowed herself to, to, to do a show where she would let me implement some type of DJ. So right. When and, we I, went and, to, I, I, and excuse me, I, I seen those. Yeah. Okay. I seen that when he and, actually is... Doing the show right. with her, right. and they going yeah. back and forth and stuff like that. At the end, then she'll she'll sing with the crowd, doing a, a, a crowd response, and she's singing together forever. And right. then they're singing the line, and I'm cutting up sing sing the original sample okay. that they use for that. That's yeah. how we end the sets, and they were always crowd pleasers. And right, shit. When I would go to a town, if I went to Chicago, I called my boys that DJ in Chicago. Yo, want to come rock with me? You yeah. can scratch this while I do this. Okay, and they were like, bet. When I went to San Francisco, Lazy Boy. Who uh, just re recently won the uh, Red Bull Three Style? Mm -hmm. I called him up when I got to San Francisco. I was like, "Yo, I'm coming to your hood. You right. want to do this for me?" He was like, "Hell yeah!" And he yeah. jumped on there. So Lizette allowed me to do shit like that. Okay. But you know, just like everything else, it runs its course. No, of course. You know, and, yeah. and because I'm a lover of the culture, we did a show in Boston. Okay. And so this is why now that day taught me a lesson on how to be uh, recognizant when you're on somebody else's dime. I went there to DJ for Lizette. Uh -huh. George Lamont at um, at Soundcheck said, Eddie, do you know the song? So he played me Down By Law, Fat Five Freddy. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I told him, I said, yeah, it's this. And he said, you got it? I said, yeah. So I gave it to DJ White Boy, who does most of the freestyle artists that don't have DJs or whatever. Okay. So he was going to cut it up. He was supposed to play that record while he was singing one of his freestyle songs. Okay. They couldn't sync up. And so he asked me, Yo, Ed, would you come on and do a guest spot during my set mm -hmm. where you cutting that record up? Now, I'm not thinking <laughs> anything other than this. George Lamont, he's asked yeah. me to do this. I said, if you ask Lizette, I'm in. Okay. You know, because, 
again, the right thing to do. Right. She right. paid, you know, she's paying me. I, I'm getting paid by her tonight. You want me to do a guest slot? So we're in the House of Blues in Boston. Fucking all, all the freestyle shows are packed out. Right, right. He called. He said, Eddie, I spoke to her. It's all good. Okay. Usually when I do a show with Lizette, as soon as I set us off, I'm at the hotel already. All right. Already just going to sleep or just getting prepared to leave. Yeah. So I stood there and I seen her leave and I said, everything's good? It's like, it's all good. So I'm thinking at this time, she slapped off on it. So I get up with George and George's like, Eddie, what you got for me? And then I started cutting down by law. Yeah. And then he started doing uh, Without You. Without You, right. And let me tell you something. I did not expect that because it was supposed to be just eight bars of that. We okay. did the whole fucking song. Okay. And the crowd lost it. After that, when I got off, he got such an ovation and I ran off the stage. I ran off the stage. Yeah, was, you were done. Yeah. I was done. I was like, I did what I did, but yo, it was at that moment that nigga was just like, yo, Ed, you that fucking dude. Like right. if you didn't know. But you know, whatever, that opened up that door. <laughs> <laughs> the confidence still comes out. That's the so, self though. We like that shit. Like that. So yeah. we went we went to the after party, which was at the hotel we were all staying at. And the second I walked in, I had a norm moment. You know, like you walk into Cheers and everybody's like, no, hey. oh, they're at BBS. And yeah. everybody's calling me, everybody's saying, yo, now freestyle artists that I see in all the fucking shows who won't say a shit to me, mm -hmm. BBS, that was some good shit. Thank you. But I'm not, I'm thinking it's all about what me and Lizette did because I do the same shit with Lizette. So I get to Sal. Sal's there with K7. K7's like, Ed, hey, you stole the show. Lizette's there. So she is darting at me. I'm like saying to myself, all right, something just happened. Right. But now all these people are giving me drinks and all of this stuff. And uh, I was drunk like within five minutes. But I was drunk with everybody. Yo, Ed, you stole the show. You stole yeah, the show. Yeah. So I was supposed to leave with Lizette. She left me that day in Boston. <laughs> that was my lesson learned that. But did she actually clear it? Okay, so I don't, I, I, I can't. George tells me he did. Right. Lizette, you know, always said that, you know, she has her issues with certain artists, but George was one of her friends. Right. So when he said, yo, Ed, I spoke to Lizette. Yeah. I don't know if he asked her, hey, how your dog's doing? <laughs> are they great? Okay. Right, and that was, it. that was his cosign. Right, right. And, and then when I asked her, are you good? And she said, yeah, I'm not knowing what was asked. Right, yeah. right. So, you know, again, it wasn't until I got back, you know, we got into on the phone and, you know, I was a bike, I was trying to ride bike, trying to get into this shit and. She said some shit. I hope you fall off your fucking bike. Oh, damn. I was like, yo, this can't be life right now. Right, right, right. Yeah, I was hurt. Not because I wasn't going to be working with her anymore, but I was like, yo, she's fucking. And I was like, you know what? It is what it is. And then started doing a couple of shows with George. And then that's, and Coro. And then that's what led me to meeting Sapphire. Mm -hmm. Now, Sapphire was that one chick growing up. She had the bangs, the bangs. Yeah. you yeah. know. Yeah, she was that chick that man, you know, the, every teen's dream. Right, right, right. You know, but I, I didn't meet that version. I met the soccer mom. Soccer mom, against, Sapphire. Say, she still looks great. Yeah, she has a great voice, great show. Right. But you know, when I met her now, it was, it was different. And she came at me. We were doing a show in Daytona, at the uh, the Hard Rock. She was like, "Hey, you know, yeah, would you be willing to, you know, give it a shot?" Right. So, you know, I'm saying to myself, all right, she does about 20 shows a year. You know, the pay is good. Okay. You know, so I was like, all right, you know, but she's more mechanical and her stuff. Like, she has a show tape ready. Me and Lizette would do shit live. Live. Right, right. So it was a different type of setup. And yeah. then, you know, it would be like, all right, you can have a scratch here or there. I am not the guy that's going to sit there and cut up, ah, so fresh and right, all right, of that right, shit right. throughout the whole fucking thing, you yeah. know. So it, it was like, you know... I, I tell her, you got to implement me in your show. Let me do it live. I can't just stand back there. I, just, right. I laugh at people who do that shit. And I was like, yeah. one of your biggest assets, you're fucking not using. Yeah. So, you know, we, we, we got better. We did a few shows and we got a real good rapport. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even to tonight's show. Right. You know, when we doing with her, we just did, uh, we did New Year's in, uh, uh, in this other spot in yeah. Long Island. We got good chemistry. Okay. Nope. I mean, it'll be nice to see Eddie B. Swift with, you know, he said Sapphire, Coral, George Lamar, and um, there was one more person I'm missing. Stevie B. No, it was um, Abel, was it? Abel, Abel. Abel. 
And he's doing the DJ the, the, set the, the, for the whole thing. The yeah. whole thing. Oh yeah, yeah. He's a DJ. He's the main DJ. Yeah, yeah, stuff like yeah. That. yeah. You know we, need, we need to we need to clear this up with Lizette. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you know I mean, because it's, it's, uh, it was a miscommunication. You know, yeah. Lizette. Like, yeah. You know who her DJ is now? Ted. Oh okay. okay. Oh, okay. So you yeah. see how that works? Hey, yeah. Yeah, they're both <laughs> from Harlem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's who our DJ is now. No, no, no. We, we want the Eddie B. Swift with those five. Freestyle artist. Right, right, right. You, you we're, gonna, we're gonna book it ourselves. We're gonna we, do it ourselves. We, that'd be dope. You know hey, we hey, we, hey, we hey. need you to open the night and then DJ for them. We'll have, we'll have, we'll have Ted open the night. Oh, shit. That shit <laughs> Here we go with the bulls. Ted yeah. will never let that shit happen. <laughs> Take out that shit in his rider. Anybody that he feels vastly superior than, he is not gonna open up for. So you want, let's go into some games, John. All right, then. Let's switch it up. We'll do that. All right, now. I'm, I'm, yo, do I get to say a disclaimer? Disclaimer, yeah. I heard about this before, man. This <laughs> but, so, but, well, you don't know where we're going yet. No, no, right? no, no. I've heard some of the stuff, the ideas, and if it's anything like what I'm thinking, I'm fucking scared shitless right don't, now. Don't be scared. We got you. No, no. Well, yo, listen to me. When, as a DJ, like you, as, you as a DJ yourself, right. when you're in a certain mode and you hear certain things, shit that you might know, you know, the original piano from Uptown Anthem is right. fucking Bill Withers. Right. Like, you would know that, but if you're in a certain headspace... That should have been in the back of your head. He'd be of like, course, I can't remember the fucking so, name right now. And that's now. why yeah. I feel like right now, your motherfucker's gonna hit me <laughs> with this shit. No, no, and, no, yeah. no. We're gonna, we're gonna... <laughs> and then he's telling me, oh, you got you guys who know what they're doing, but they only got one out of four. And I'm like, oh, oh God. Damn. Damn, he can't get... Oh, damn. He... Oh, he... I can't drink right now. I can't get an excuse. <laughs> Yo, he's so, so, up. Let's like fuck it up. Go be real right now, man. <laughs> I need to get some of that OG Kush right now. <laughs> I need an excuse right now. All right, where do you want to go first? Let's go with the um. The choice is yours. All right. So somebody's paying you the same bag, right, and booking you for the same day, right, for a club party, a house party, or a corporate party. What you picking? Club. Why? Corporate party is a corporate party. Those are usually structured. They don't usually go well. You gotta deal with a hundred requests per night. Mobile parties are good, but again, it's same thing as a corporate structure. In the club, you're dependent on. You can still get the. the I hate to show the people with the phones doing this. <laughs> hey, <thing>. play this. <laughs> Bad Bunny. <laughs> but right now, the one is Bad Bunny. That always comes just up. Just trust, just, you know, again, I, I thrive in those situations. Right. Like, when I see people do this, I just ignore them and watch people fucking dance even harder. And then that shit just negates itself. So, yeah, yeah club, club, mm-hmm. at this point in my life, a club. All right. Okay. Dope. All right. So, if you had a choice, right, would it be bartender, bottle girl? Question, Ho- I was scared. Hookah girl, because that's new right that's now. New right? right now. Or a groupie. Okay, so here we go. Hookah girls are usually the age of my daughter. Okay. Never happening. Okay. Bartenders are usually washed up strippers uh-huh. who don't take off their clothes because they got a little bit of wide under stretch marks. Right, okay. And I'm not into strippers. Or never have been. All right. <sighs> strippers <laughs> are just that. Bottle girls are just strippers who didn't make it in. Let me not say it like that. Because <laughs> the there are a lot of bottle girls that are a little bit classier, but again, they, they, I guess for me it's the age difference. Like, I can't, I, nah. And groupies? And I'm thinking of fucking old lady with a pack of cigarettes and a shirt. Okay. <laughs> That's. And then I'm going to the old age. I'm into rock star groupies. Wait, 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 wait. Don't talk to me about these chicks that hang around DJs and fuck oh, every DJ in the block. No, I'm talking about rock star D- uh, groupies. Those are the But ones. you're talking about Eddie B. Swift 2023. Talk about Eddie B. Swift back then. Oh, God. Come on. No daughter in your life right now. Sorry. <laughs> well, okay, so. As I guess the, the 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 answer I can say is, as a DJ, you usually get to pick the best out of the the, the four, the, the, the little, three back then. Was three, yeah, three. like you know, you you have your choices. You know, right. DJs are, are the guys you know that that got the attention. That you know, everybody wanted to go home with them. Yeah. Everybody wanted to hang out with them. Everybody wanted yeah. to get high with them. Everybody wanted to fuck them. Everybody wanted, like that. He was that guy because yeah. you know, yeah. at the end of the day. In our world, in our universe, yeah, we build ourselves to be in that position. Yeah, but don't put our us in the universe <laughs> right now. Like it's about you. I can't yeah, take it's a like, yeah, yeah. in, right? <laughs> Again, I, I, we said Eddie B. Swift back then. Yeah, yeah, now he, okay, so now, all right, here we go. He, he kind of pivoted. Yeah. Like, he was trying to get out. We're of doing, it. we're doing the interview. <laughs> we interviewing you now. The question is Eddie B. Swift. Okay, yeah, 19- can you repeat the question again, please? Okay. Repeat the question again, okay. please. Eddie B. Swift, nineteen eighty-eight, right? 
1988, Eddie B. Now Swift. go 1991. I was bigger. No, okay, no, no. I was bigger. Okay. Not as sad as no. as far as that I can actually get yeah. these chicks. All right. Back then I didn't know what none of those were. Okay, so 1991 Prime is summertime. You know what I'm saying? And well, they ain't had no hookah girls back no, then. No, no, so, that's okay. Yeah, no so we we'll go bartender. And there was no bottle girls either. Cigarette girls. Bartenders, <laughs> okay. Know. So bartenders were guys and girls, and you, you know, I, I didn't go that way. And, and the girls, I really didn't want to associate with. But there was groupies for sure. The, yeah, they did. They, 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 bartenders were just fucking groupies that just worked at the club. Okay. You know, the, the groupie chicks, those are the ones that show up every week. You know, you catch yourself on one of those weeks where you drank a little bit of Amarillo Sour or the, you know, them girls. Bacardi. Drinks. Oh, yeah. Home. yeah. <laughs> and smoked a little, a little sign, I sniffed a little sign, you know, then they can get it. And, you know, we, we've all knew a few they, of them. They'll get that Eddie B. Swift looking in the mirror, the right hand, the 12 inch. They get that. <laughs> I never had a chick under the DJ table sucking my dick. The disco music. <laughs> the while I was DJing, that is a rumor and a lie. I used to take him to the air conditioning room. The mop plaza you talking about? No, no, the air conditioning. Oh, he had air conditioning, you know what I mean? Air so, I, I played in classy clothes. He was fancy. Right? I didn't fucking play in clothes that had a fucking uh, a, a power vet, uh, fan or anything like that. So come on, man. Don't associate me with that. That's a dive bar. I played in a club club. All right, so if you have... All right, so you was in, the, in an air condition room, right? Yeah. So those are close quarters. Right. You know what I mean? So if you had one signature swift move... I think I get one day, I go fuck, bro. I get one day, you walked in, you was gonna see ass going like this, and it's gonna be some rabbit shit. Nah, but, eight, eight miles rabbit. <laughs> be rabbit. Nah, but well, you know, but again. No, eat rabbit, eat rabbit. Eat rabbit. You want not, not, not true story, though. Wait, wait. I was so more wrapped up into the drug scene because, yeah. again, you know, the drugs would, again, it's, when you're sniffing and you're smoking, it's two different kind of heads. Yeah. I wasn't really trying to smash a bitch. You're like, they say your dick can't get hard when you coke the lies. That my shit worked like a motherfucking boy. <laughs> I just didn't care for that because my only concern, and again, it's going to sound stupid, but all I gave a fuck about was DJing. I didn't give a fuck. Like, yo, you went, Everything went, else was extra. You can fuck a bitch anytime you want. Yeah, man. Like yeah. that, It wasn't nothing special for me because, again, if I did a strip club, you know, you smash somebody from there, you're smashing somebody that... Everybody's done smashed already at some no, point. No, of course. Right? Yeah, yeah. She done been through the but, mill. You know, yeah. groupies, man. They, again, those are the ones that can either turn to baby mamas or fucking exes or something like that. Yeah. You know, that yeah. you end up having a kid with them and, yeah. you, you got, know, on child support for the next problem. 18 years. Yeah, bigger problems. <laughs> you know, that, that that's a that groupie uh, uh, thing. And, and, and again, I, I, didn't, I didn't mess with bartenders and strippers because this wasn't my, it wasn't my thing. I... I I enjoyed hanging out with my crew. Like yeah. I loved my boys. Right. Even though I didn't get the same love back for them, I love to go to the club with my boys, and like I would like to see them win with chicks. Right. I would like to see them ha- smash the baddest bitch when the, the drug dealer I was there is throwing all the champagne money out there, and they working. walk out with these chicks. Yo, I used to love watching that. That right, that's right. that that to me was part of the game, and and yeah. I enjoyed that shit to the fullest. I didn't like to do it because I, I I'm so. I'm an introvert. Yeah. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't find myself enjoying the situation, you know, like, like that. Yeah. You know, like yeah, one yeah. night stands weren't my thing. Have I had them? Sure. Yeah. But you know, they, they, they weren't my thing. So that, that question is a very incomplete answer. Uh, um, yeah. It's a, it's an open it, Yeah, open it's, it's so open, yeah. you know, everybody lies and say, yeah, I fucked, I had a bitch stuck in my dick while I was DJ. No, you didn't lie because in front of that was just on the shelf. So unless the bitch was in the <laughs> shelf, turn to the side and... Yeah. Stop, no, that wasn't happening. Like, and there'd be forty people in there. Oh, the shit was mad dirty under there. Oh, Aaron Hall was down there, and he already took the bitch before, and she got upstairs. So, right, right. that was a Gloria Velez <laughs> reference that I guess you have not been watching social media. <laughs> <laughs> Look up Aaron Hall and the shit he's talking. I know he know about it because that's why he laughing. Over the only there. shit that I seen that's popping right now is Keith Murray. Oh, with the um, with, with Foxy Brown with Foxy and with Brown um, and, um who, that chick the. Uh, who well, was it? Who posted Superhead. 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 Well, no, I, it was somebody else too. Yeah. I have this famous thing that I always say. You know when you when you put a Q tip in your ear, mm-hmm. right? And you can go as far into your ear as possible because it feels good. Until like, you hit that yeah. one spot. And then when it stops going, that's when you should pull out. Motherfuckers not pulling out. They're trying <laughs> yeah, to yeah, yeah, break their still, eardrum and going. all of this shit, man. Like still going. <laughs> once you feel that resistance, just stop. Because yeah. ain't nothing good that's gonna get said right, right, or right. done at that point. And that's where we're at with Keith Murray. He's just local father, man. They just, 
another distraction for, for more bullshit right. that we're overlooking. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's go into the samples, Joe. You ready All to right. smoke? All right, hold ready on. Let's go. I've got four, four samples. Comfy. Hold on, I got to sit up for this. All right, get comfy. Get, get into no, it. I'm comfortable, right? Uh, you no, know, now, now the position. Now you want to get serious. Get, you got to get me into thought mode. Now get in DJ mode. Right, let's, let's go. go. Take it to the top now. Oh, the Ashley's Roach play, Club. Hello. Ashley's Roach Club. I know this. No, but who sampled it? Who used it? Who didn't use it? The no, fucking LL Cool J. Okay. Hey, hey, okay, and I'm back. Oh, he's, uh, it's, it's easy. It's too easy for you, man. No, I, yeah. That's the record. He said it right. Fuck you, Eddie. <laughs> 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 I'm feeling better about myself right now. Now don't come up with some lefty shit right yo, now. And we're going to bring the Orlando artist from 1996 before <laughs> Blas came out. And he used this abstract sample from Parliament that I didn't have that album. I was not privy to that one. Let's, Let's go, go to the second go one. Two. Let me play. Hold on. Stop. Oh, that's the... Uh, Truth Hurts, uh, uh -huh. DJ Quick Production. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, uh, Ozar. Yeah, yep. it was Rakim. We'll feature Rakim. Yeah. All right, and dope. All right, it's too easy, man. It's too easy for Eddie. Uh, be careful. Yeah, yeah, facts. Let's go. I'm right now. I got four on four, so I'm going to get beat up. Hold on. The Rock. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Missy, you kiss it. Kiss kissing no. you. That's... That's not it. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, you didn't play the whole thing either. You, you stopped in the rhythm section. Like, let the beat play. Let, let it play one more time. Yeah, I'm gonna take one stop. This is Shazam right now. Yeah. Beat, this is nah. <laughs> it's beat. It's yeah, beat smoke. Let me smoke. just hear the beat because again. <laughs> let it jog. Give me a second. Yeah, let, let, it, let it let it ride out. One more. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I know when the beat plays. I'm gonna know what it is. I'm hoping now you don't like <laughs> that. But none of this shit got sampled. There goes one. This is coming. Stop. All right, stop. First off, there's no wrong answer here because, yes, Toto used that in Kissing You. Yes, but we're looking for that. Come on, Eddie. Oh, you, you want me to name? Yo, there's a the fucking thousand records that use that sample. Yeah, but what's the one we're looking for? Come on. You know this. You know this. I gave you one. You, no, you gave me 19. <laughs> you gave me, you gave me like cop out. You bad boy out. shit. You know what I'm saying? No, it's not bad. Yo, first off, <laughs> again, that, that was used. Again, yes, because well, I played multiple, A multiple. All right, but so what's Besides Toto. Which what, are, who what, else you have besides Toto? I, I'm, again, right now, I can't even think. I'm now total stuck in my head, and that's oh, the only version I'm in. Fucked who, up on that one. Who's, what, what, who? Play it. Three times dope. Yes. Wow. <laughs> You can remember All that? Right. He knew it total first? I know, but I know the, the, the I know the song, but come on, like, you know, again, You went total first. See, all right, there's holes in this fucking game. Let's call it what it is. <laughs> because again, what, hold on, hold on. Hold ask, on. What, wait, wait, what kind of holes are you talking about? This, like hole, no, you no, go or hole? No, like, no, there's no, some no, holes no, in this house? No, no, no. <laughs> At the end of the day, only people are gonna know fucking three times dope was people from fucking Philly or DJs that have been doing 37 years. I and you, and what are you? Okay, but you're but not from I, Philly, but yeah, but I wasn't you got thinking 35. about three times dope because you know what I'm saying. Jules fucking annoying. it's Jules so fucking like, yeah. thinking correct. Jules, yeah. Jules, we are hippie. Jules, I like oh. I met Jules on some Akon shit. That's when I first found out. Akon was saying he wasn't doing no R and B shit. Yes, he was. That purple motherfucker was not wait, doing anything. Time out, time out. What the fuck, locked up was what? He wasn't singing. Yeah. He was doing well, it. It was an R&B, though. Hold up, hold up, hold up. What are you calling out? Time out, time out. We run this. Was, we run this. Hood okay, no, stop, stop, stop. That was a hood guy. I'm calling bullshit here. <laughs> what fucking Akon? What, what kind of artist is he? I don't even know no more. Top 40? He's, He's a pop top 40. artist. He's sure. a pop artist for He's sure. He came and doing R&B. Fucking Locked Up, Lonely, we're all singing songs. Well, yeah, we run but, this game. Right. Well, hold on, hold on. But no, hold it because we, again, we, you got to be like, you know, that that's that's like, all right, there could be a hundred answers to that fucking shit. Yes, we, you're right. You're right. You're we right. Run, we run this game like a Uno game. Yeah. All right. I think I just pulled out draw four. Because there's four answers to that right off the bat. Exactly. The first one that came to me was that's fucking how we, total kissing. Yeah. And you know what's crazy is? No, no, that's not it. Yes, it is. It's the fucking sample. You ask me, the question you ask me is, what's the sample and, who and what it? song used it? <laughs> if right. three times dope was the only artist to use it, then that is the correct answer. When you got multiple questions, you need to be specific. Specific. No. But What's you what said, wait, 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 wait. In a situation like this, Ed. Now, Eddie. Three times dope. Okay, but. Again. You are Eddie B. Swift. You are not. 
fucking. Right, you are not Toto's fucking DJ I, or I, Bad I, Boys I, DJ. And you know what I'm saying? Not DJ, so, DJ yeah, but you hip hop. But yes, you hip hop. <laughs> but you hip hop. No, but hip hop meaning that I just know shit. You, you should know three times though. I know. Not because they were right, When you played the record, I broke down who they are. I can tell you the fucking neighbors, uh, 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 the, the, the members. <laughs> the, the boy teeth was now starting to stick. <laughs> <laughs> I can break down everything. I can give you that last five hits. My right. fucking favorite song is Greatest Man Alive. All right, so we give you that. We give you that one. Don't worry about Thank June. You. Us three over here, we vote that. We're going to give you that. We gonna, the total? We gonna, I know what I leave here. I'm gonna edit this shit. I'm gonna put a big time on. Nah, we're not gonna edit now. And we're like, that's W over here. We ain't editing shit. Eight times though. All right, let's go. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna call a lifeline. All right. I'm gonna call Break Blue yeah. right now. Break, oh my god, no, no, no. Let's get one more time. Let's get one more. Uh, you ready? Okay. Oh no, uh, I'm sorry. I just. Who you gonna call, you say? No, no, no. I'm gonna call, call Break Blue. Break Break Blue. Like the, break the sample fact, OG. You know call that call. <laughs> the, sam on. the sample OG. Hold on. Yeah, <laughs> break Beat Blue. <laughs> Let's see. Only Eddie will pull out Only the phone. He pulled out a super serious <laughs> lifeline. Like, <laughs> I want you to play. I want you to play the the, the, the kissing you like shit. The kissing you shit. Yeah. The sample. The sample, and then let's see what he comes up with. All right, you got to put the headphones to the to the phone one if he answers. <clears throat> Get the, the sample guy. This motherfucker lives in California. He sleeps now during the daytime. <laughs> Shout out to Break Beat Lou, man. Uh, Ultimate Breaks. I would call my connect out in Canada, but then I'd be releasing too much information. Yeah, now we don't want that. Because <sighs> he... I, Break Beat Lou would never figure that one out either. But that last one, come on, Leo. Give me fucking eight right, bars. Go, go, go. Right, right, I can get eight right, bars. Eight too bars. Many. There you go. No, that's too many. Yeah, They're like, giving me the rhythm section. Yeah. If they didn't sample that part, then that's I'm the going to go. Let it play, let it play, let it play. Let it rock. Put both headphones on. Let it rock. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Timing in the back. Rooftop. Man. And the game with the gangster link. What is it? Oh, gosh. What is it? Come on, you know this. I, I probably do. You again, know this. My head right now, I got so many freestyle songs in my fucking head. <laughs> Wait. I can't even think shit. What is that? It's Curtis Mayfield? Play the song. You want to know that one? No, who the fuck would know that shit on rainy day? You know what, motherfucker? If I sit right now and pull four beats out of my shit, four samples, I guarantee you, you're not gonna even get it. And I'll play the whole song for you. And I'm like, oh shit, Ed. Yeah, I don't know that one. But, Ed. No, no, Eddie, no. Yo, Eddie, I thought like I was set up. For that, yo, for that. Yo, Juba, yo, whatever it is you have your told own... you that, that I said when I first came to Orlando, I'm sorry. Say bullshit, don't believe Jay, don't believe no, Mike Blank. You can't. You can't, yo. When you get your own podcast, you can interview it's me. Set me up. <laughs> Fuck out of here! It's a setup. Man. It's not a setup. That's it. Is. Oh, you got three out of four, nah, right? You did good. You get him. You get him total. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you got three total. out of four. Total. That's good though. You have to change the parameters to all oh. be more clear. Hey, look, I'm thinking of a certain. If record. I was, let me see. If I was interview, we were interviewing. Fuck, who I could say like a DJ that wasn't 35 years in the game. Um. Give me somebody correct. Like some old, like we had like yeah, yeah. Like, like Crush Unami last week or, or right, Jax right. Or but, but even somebody even, even further than that, you know what I'm saying? And what, you would expect him to know three times dope. Fuck yeah. No, as a hip hop head, yes. No, the sequence. The thing is, like again, yes, a, a hardcore hip hop head would know that. But again, you, you when you say a sample of a song, you got to be like, yo, I'm looking for somebody specific. And then you know, I'm like, okay, he's not gonna probably think total. But then maybe that's the most popular record, at least I thought, or the last record of substance right. that that used the same. So record. so maybe like say a DJ Point Blank, right? Okay. They say he probably would have known Total right off the rip. Right? He would know it. I, I give that. Well, I, I think he might even know three times though, because he's a hip hop head. He's still young on the young side. But he's a hip hop head. He though. won't. He wouldn't you said, know. You he said, wouldn't know that three times though. He would probably know Greatest Man Alive. He might have known Greatest Man Alive. Yeah, because yeah, that, that like yeah. if you know three times though, that's the song. Like, people who still thought that was a Steady B record. Right, well, Steady B's name is... It's the first name that comes out, Steady B's name. <laughs> All right, so... Listen, you, hey, you we're good. still giving you three yeah, out of four, okay? Yeah, come on. No, Relax, yo, it's all good. First of all, I, I, I feel like I should have hit four, four and four, but I'll take the three and four. At least I, I've 
I figured him out because I was taking the way he was telling me to call. I'm like saying, oh, I'm getting 0 for 4. Now I'm going to be the joke. I'm like, all right, don't get the Eddie B. Swift award. He got all four of them wrong. And he wasn't high and he wasn't drunk. And we didn't tell him the rules. All right. We got you. We got, we got, got you. Got you. Let's, let's go to so, the. All right. So we like to support small businesses here. Um, and they're not small right now, they're all over the internet. Um, uh, it's a game called Lyrically Co- Correct, so make sure y'all pick this up. All right, here we go. That's all right. Right. Is it called Correct? What's the name it's called Lyrically Correct. All right. Yeah, all right. So make sure y'all, y'all pick up this from, from Amazon and check it out. It's a dope game, especially if you're drinking or you're just hanging out with your friends and shit like that. So we picked out a couple joints in here for you. And I'm going to read you the question. Are these random or you picked these specifically? We no. Pe- we picked these specifically oh, for you. Yes. All right. So... <laughs> We picked out a couple. And they're not freestyle questions. And they're not freestyle <laughs> questions. All right? Let's go. Let's go. So I'm going to read you the questions. Some have multiple choice. I'll read you the multiple <coughs> choice. Some have a specific answer we're looking for. Okay. Trying try to be clear here with you. All right? <laughs> Let's all go. Right. According to Jay-Z, if you're trying to wild out, how many cuts do you have in your eyebrows? Three, uh, Kane, three, three cuts. Oh, I think these were too easy. Yeah, I think so. I think so. So, all right. How many pounds did Big Pun lose? Record pounds he lost or on the, on the, on the record? On the song, on the oh, song. He said it in the song. I'm trying to live. I know, that's, that's the thing. It's so hard. All right, is it A, 100 pounds, B, 25 pounds, C, 45 pounds, D? 100 pounds. There you go. Yeah. Trying to live, I'm trying to live. Uh, that's I'm, t- I'm playing those songs, but again, like yo, I've been so being a blend DJ and you hear stuff like again, I've been so much in the mode that I'm at. I did big pun blends two years ago, so right everything that I would remember about big pun, I've already put behind me. Dope. All right, so and feel so good. Mace said he doesn't understand the language language of which kind of people. A, fellas with no honeys. B, ladies that look funny. C, people with short money. B, people with short money. Yep, people with short money. Good shit. I wouldn't give them the A to Z shit. I always fucking what's the question. <laughs> Shut up. Don't listen to this fucking guy. It ruined your fucking set right here. You're doing a great job, man. <laughs> all right. <laughs> great job because you're answering all three. All right. <laughs> this is the last one? Nah, I got two more. He's, he's flying through them. It's too easy. I might have to dig, some, dig up some more. But All right, so when that blue and red suit fits her hips so right, what does fabulous say? See, I'm not a fabulous guy like that. Like I don't. The only song I play from Fabulous is fucking. Breathe. Yeah, really, and that's not a line from Breathe. So. I know it's. It, he says I'd be like did it did it did it did it. Damn, I, I wouldn't know that what, only because. What joint was that? That was from um. The one that he did with the what's the with name? the Neptunes, I believe. Yeah, well, Neptunes, oh, yeah. but this chick, a little more. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah little, little more. more's on that one. Right. Uh, okay. I think it's his first single, I think it was. What did Kanye drink for breakfast? Mm. Let me know when you want a hint. You can hit me with the hints. I, the, the answer, I'll get it, but... Again, Kanye's not it's, another artist that from, I listen to like It's from that. The Wire. Through The Wire. Oh, uh, Scissor... Uh, uh-huh. Ensure. For, for, yeah, Ensure. No, it was a... You, oh, you was close, though. It was a, a boost... A boost for breakfast. Go pull out the record for- right now. He drinks <laughs> and sure. Let's go right now. I'm calling your BS I'm, I'm, right now. I'm, I'm, I'm Get the record. He does, he does say and sure, but I think that's for lunch. It was, it was for lunch. He, he said, I drink a watch. Let's see. I know he said scissor and uh, sure, and that would be the only thing you would drink in the beginning because, you know. Are we putting up the lyrics now? Yeah. Oh, you got it already? Let's see. Let's see if he's right. It's coming. Dope song. Con- this Kanye, we miss Kanye, man. You know they had this fabulous new thing on iTunes Kanye. that the words come up. I know. But that's right. Mm-hmm. I want to hear the song. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you in the song, Eddie? Let's see. Let's see. That's like a fucking 32 boy intro. I know. Come on, come right, y'all. Come up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I, I got the lyrics right here. Here's it goes. All right. Here it goes right here. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, I drink a goose for breakfast, an insure for dessert. Right, I, I said a <laughs> But you were there, though. Yeah, yeah. I said a it, it, it got me the same way, too. He when said they asked breakfast me and then he said insure. Maybe that's what I was hearing. I, they got me not a Kanye thing. guy like that. So. They got us all like that. They got us all like that. Absolutely. <laughs> Is that somebody calling you? Uh, who's this? Yeah. That's <laughs> <good. laughs> oh, God, so, Eddie, that's. Those are the games right now. We just played three games. Uh, and, you, know? and, uh, you did great. Oh, no, you did not, great. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Did great. Not for nothing. My nervous was my, my nervousness <laughs> was making me talk shit. That's actually some dope shit I just did. <laughs> I <laughs> the, I think there needs some tweaks need to be yeah. done to it. We go. It's still go dope. Go. dope. Go. Dope. Eddie B's tweaks. <laughs> Eddie B's tweaks. Eddie B's tweaks. <laughs> EBS tweaks. There yeah. we go. So um, Ed. Yes. Um, name us five DJs now and five DJs back then. Um, that you look up to? Red Alert. Anthony Mangini. Kenny Dope. Baby Heck. Mm -hmm. Glenn Fisher. Dope. Shout out to Kenny Dope. Man. Those are guys who definitely inspired me at some point in my life. Yeah. Just by being who they are, whether I knew them personally or not. Yeah. You know, but, I mean, Red Alert should be on every on top of everybody's, everybody's list. Everybody's yeah, list. he's on the Mount Rushmore for sure. Oh, yeah. And the new guys, see, that's, that's, again, I don't fuck with a lot of these new kids because, again, they're not going to be around. The Danny S's of the world, the Incredible Boys of the world, um, who was super new. Um, I don't know any super new cats that yeah. I would really want to listen to like that. Like uh, Philip Ferrari, who was, okay. uh, used to DJ for French Montana. Okay. Uh, he, I guess, because he's considerably younger, those are uh, three. Um, flawless, but mm -hmm. flawless can, can be considered both an OG or a newbie. Um, and one more. Chaos and Easy. Uh, I'll give love to the cats from around my way. Okay. Those are, you know, guys who might not be known nationally, but definitely guys who have my ear and, and definitely right. respect their They're skills. Dope. dope, dope, dope. Especially from around your neighborhood, you said. So. Yeah. That's dope. We got another debate going on, Kurt. Let's go ahead. Let's go. Best hip hop movie. Ah, it's easy. Beat Street. Thank you. Why? Because it is. I mean, well, Crush your... Groove. Crush Groove was a personal favorite of mine because of the rap interludes and stuff like that. But it wasn't a hip hop movie, though. Crush Groove. Yes. What the fuck are you talking about? It's the fucking life of Russell Simmons. <laughs> it was a Def Jam. No, it was about stop, a Def Jam. Stop, stop. It was about a Def Jam. Yo, when you Q-tip and the resistance, no, pull no, out, pull no. out. It was about, it was about, it was about, but it was about a record label the movie was all about. What do you think Def Jam was? That was based but off of Def Jam. Right, Don't be fooled by the, the Sheila E thing. No, no. That's that, another argument. The elements, the elements of hip-hop. Run DMC, hip-hop. No. Hello, Cool J, hip-hop. They were actors. Boys. No, they weren't. Listen to me. They were actors they playing was, guys who okay. wanted to do hip hop. So shit. okay, you got you got Ooh, Drew, you got rappers. Wait wait, you got rappers, right? He Russell you know, Simmons. You know what he's, talk, he's talking about? No. He's talking about the elements. The of elements hip -hop. of hip hop. So the five elements. Like you said, so, B Street, oh. MCN, oh, wait, 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 okay. okay, that's what you're talking about. So uh, is that, is that movie? Uh, so what, okay, so give me another hip hop movie. Wild well, style, of course. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, breaking. Yes. Breaking one. Breaking two. He don't um, like breaking too, so he always yeah, counts that, that one out. Count, What's that, the electric boogaloo was wrong with that, man. You know, <laughs> colors. That's not a hip hop movie. Why isn't it a hip hop movie? That's talking only about gangs and cops. They had some graffiti in there though. Right, First ahead. off, this is the LA lifestyle again. It's but it's West still, Coast. but it's still not a hip hop movie. So okay, so, so you don't consider Boys in the Hood a hip hop movie? No, they don't. He no, that. we have this argument every week. Yeah. Why is it a hip hop movie? Literally every week. <laughs> okay, so oh, Eddie, Eddie B, yeah, Eddie, okay. Eddie B Swift. Yes. Thirty-five years in the game. Yeah. Okay. Just give. How old is your oldest son? Thirty-two. Thirty-two, right? He's the oldest. Yes. Okay. So say when he was ten or twelve, right? Because what? How, how old is Boys in the Hood movie? How old is it? Not that old. Yeah. Is that, oh is no, that Boys in the Hood. I yeah, Boys in the Hood. Yeah, that's from the 90s. Right, um, okay. Sure. So, was it when like 92 or something? He or was 10 or 12 years old, okay? And you want to show him a hip hop movie. You talking about Boys in the Hood and Cuz gonna be a hip hop movie for him to see? Uh, so, so let's understand the interpretations. Let's, let's understand the interpretations 91. of what the movie was 
what, what significance it had to play in the, the culture of hip hop. Again, this is like we didn't know uh, as being on the east side of things. We didn't know the West Coast lifestyle. Right. We didn't know their story. We, well, we did. We, we did. Breaking. Yeah, yeah. But Breaking's that, that, part of what's going on. You can't use that but as, as, still, a, but as a temperature taker for, for what, what was hip-hop really is on, on that side. Yeah. Because then again, that, that had Reckless and Ice-T and all of that. Right. But it wasn't to movies like Boys in the Hood that was based on the, on the culture of hip-hop. Because it, what, if what you culture listen to hip-hop? Music, if, listen to the soundtrack. The soundtrack. But, I'm not asking about like soundtrack. No, I'm no, not asking about no, no, soundtrack. No, 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 but, but I'm saying to me, right. when something is hip hop, if it uses any element of hip hop, whether it's the music, Dead Presidents, that movie was nothing hip hop. It didn't yeah. have this thing, but it was very hip hop because of the soundtrack. Like the soundtrack is what made it hip hop to me. It, but it, it's it, not a culture about the culture we're talking about. I, I, said, I just ask, I I just ask you a question. There's not any real movies just, out there outside oh, of Wild Style, B Street, Breaking. That's it. That has well, you know what? You know what? Element. But I'll let you put me to a new one this week. The Roxanne Roxanne movie? And, and I know it's about... Right. You calling in, that in hip-hop? Are you movie? calling that hip-hop? Because the, the elements... No, 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 no. Elements. That, A question I'm asking you. You calling that hip-hop? <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's actually more a, a documentary movie to me. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying though, but the documentary movie... That's a movie. It has, it has straight three out of elements. Compton. Straight out of Compton. He's still sucking Hip-hop off. movie? No. Why no. not? How, straight out of Compton. You talking about the NW movie? Yeah. yeah. How is that hip-hop movie? Jew. You talking about the Biggie movies? Two movies? Holy shit, Jew. It's not a hip hop movie. <laughs> no, it's a documentary. Right now, right now. I feel like right now this got to be brought up. This guy I don't think Akon is not R and B, and NWA is not a fucking hip hop movie. It's it was not, about the content that we're doing. Hip hop content has to do let's with go, let's a go, let's actual go, label. Let's go with my group. I say Juice is a hip hop movie. Oh, it's that's not. A, how is Juice a hip-hop movie? Yo, yo, interview over. Stop. Yo, stop. How is, yo, Eddie, Juice. But Eddie B, you're, no. not, you're not understanding the question. Okay, okay. Good. Hip-hop tell culture. Me, do, 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 tell me in Spanish this time. Because no. I need to hear it differently. Because when I hear hip-hop and movie. Hip-hop <laughs> culture. What you, what you going to learn from it? Um, <coughs> one, one element. What are you talking about? One element. Juice? One, one yeah, element. Wait, time out. Was there a part that fucking steel was it fucking rain graffiti and one of the sit in one of the scenes? Yeah. Was it? Yeah. One yeah. graffiti tag. Okay, it's not that's one. two. That's two. Okay, then two. No, no, no. DJ. That's two. Rough house, the posters. That's not. Uh, that's so, that's, that's not part. Of, the but that's scene not, is also part of hip hop. That's on the five elements though. He's on the elements. I'm of on the hip-hop. elements yeah. of hip hop. You yeah. talking about? You talking about shit that right, anybody so can do? Out. What are the five elements of hip hop? Breaking. Uh, graffiti, mm-hmm. DJ, mm-hmm. knowledge, mm-hmm. and what knowledge. Else? MC and knowledge. MC knowledge. Yes. Oh, that's what you call it. Okay, the Zulu, MC. The Zulu. Right. You, you talking about? You talking about that? The knowledge. The knowledge you got in the air conditioning room. That's a different knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> that's a different what knowledge. What was the fifth one? <laughs> it's MCing. MCing. Yeah. And knowledge and MCing. That's two different things. I mean, that's the yeah, same yeah. thing. Right. It's five. It's five. That's the same thing. No. 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 It's not. Yeah. B boying. Okay. Rap, uh, uh, MC, DJ, <laughs> graffiti. What is this? Yeah, it's MCN. MCN. DJ <clears throat> breaking. No, no, that's B boy. That's what I said. That's B boy. Three. Mm-hmm. The fourth one is what? It's graffiti. It's graffiti, and then what else? It's knowledge. There's no such thing as knowledge. Yeah. That's. Is this a down south thing? <laughs> Did no. Plies put that in a record or something? No. Yeah, for real. Some cat from Ozone said knowledge is one of the elements of hip hop. <laughs> oh, no. Nah, y'all done did it wrong. Y'all, let me tell you something. Okay, okay. I'm going to wait. What's the five for you? What's the five? I didn't know five. I thought it was before. No, it's five elements of hip hop. It's five elements of hip hop. Knowledge is not one of them. Yes, it is. You're going to break oh, your feet. Oh, 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 You're going to break no. the mic. <laughs> who you call right, your lifeline right, now? Right, right. Who's your lifeline? He's going to he gonna call Africa Man Bottom. <laughs> he he gonna call up. Hold on, see, no, I, I gotta look at my shit. But pe- people are. Saying, <laughs> I gotta you know, call the right person here. Dude, man, pick up the fucking phone. This motherfucker. So, <laughs> I think it's, so. People have different ones. What does Google say that that does? there's different ones? So there's a knowledge. There's nothing else for knowledge. People have knowledge. All right, and, one and is, other people have beatboxing. Yeah, beatboxing. Yeah, yeah, beatboxing. That, that, yeah. First yeah. though, five percenting yeah. being a five percenter that was knowledge. Was right. that hip hop? No. 
I don't know. Let's see who he's calling on. He gonna get Africa by bottom. <laughs> I'm trying to call. <laughs> gonna, Dude, somebody call somebody from somebody the Zulu Nation. Pick up. This interview ain't gonna be over until I get somebody. To pick call up. somebody from Zulu Nation. <laughs> oh wait a minute. Get somebody from Zulu Nation on the line. <laughs> Let's go. We need somebody. Uh, we need somebody. Who you gonna call? Rocky Bucano from the hip hop uh, museum. No. I'm going to call the great <laughs> both, of, both of your mics are about to fall apart. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Grand Wizard Theodore. Okay. <laughs> hey, oh, put, him, put him on here. Hey, so I'm doing a podcast right now, and I need your help desperately. Okay, okay. Okay. What are, the, what, what are the elements of hip-hop? The five. What are the elements of hip-hop? Yes. Wow, it's, it's so many elements. You got the, you got the B-boy, you got the graffiti artist. You got the DJ, you got the MC, you got knowledge. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That, that, you, know, you. You corrected me. I did not know that. When they said knowledge, I was like, that's the same shit as MCing. But okay, I stand corrected. My apologies. No apologies. That's all right. And, and, you and, said you and, thought and, it was four. There's five. I, I, hey, you some, people, that. some people say beatbox also. You know, yeah. you just taught me something right now that I did not know. Yeah, they added, they added knowledge. They added beatboxing. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Right, Dope. and beatboxing and stuff like that. They, because, because, because it was always the four elements. Right, DJ, MC, graffiti and artist, B-boying. artist, and b-boying. Right. right, that's what I always known it to be growing up. I this knowledge thing is new to me. I didn't know that. Yeah, they added knowledge, and then they added the beatboxing. Dope. All right, well, thank. Basically, well, basically, basically, what basically the um. What was added was was the, was the Zulu Nation. They was the ones that added the knowledge, yep. and they was the one that added also added the beatboxing. Dope. See, I right. thought that was different because he when thought, I think about knowledge, I thought about the five percenters and all of that. And no, he thought, he thought he thought he does a South thing. He thought I thought that was I really thought <laughs> he does a South thing. A South thing. I didn't give him credit, but thank you, Dio, for that. Thank man. you, yes, Brother, please, I love thank you, you. Man. And link up with these brothers. They do a great podcast called Respect the DJ, and they're coming to New York and. It, they, they, yes, they we would love to have here. you. Yes, yeah, yes. Now nah, we need to have him for sure. Oh yeah, absolutely, man. I'll be, I'll be glad to, man. No problem. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, well, you we reached out. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right, man. Salute, man, salute. Man. That's hip hop. Peace. Yeah. yeah, if you don't know nothing about hip hop, Grant Theodore, he, he's on the Mount. Okay, Rushmore. so again, Grand, Grand Wizard Theodore. That, we could. that, that was that, that, that really was a, a two part type of thing because right. again, I grew up. To the four percent thing, I wasn't into Zulu Nation like that. So, you know, to, for me to know knowledge, right? right. Then why, why don't we make unity a part of hip hop too? <laughs> it unity. might be. It fun, might be. Uh, having fun. We can add it right now. We gonna add it. Let's add that, some more right shit. Now. Come on, man. Yeah. What, 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 what so was Plaza's gonna... favorite line? <laughs> Who? Bust it, bust it, baby. Bust, bust, bust baby. it, baby. Bust it, baby. Let's make bust it, baby. Uh, element of hip hop. <laughs> nobody said it like Plaza. Well, I don't know. With the way the OnlyFans is going right now, Bust It Baby is a part of hip hop. Hey, hey. <laughs> so again, so is that a hip hop movie? Or are those are those hip hop elements? <laughs> now again, so neither of us were wrong here. I didn't know that. No, no, no absolutely. No, you wasn't, hearing no. it from Theodore, that said everything. Because let me tell you something. And we, and we appreciate that, it, and we appreciate that. You know, you wasn't wrong. You wasn't right. <laughs> he had to say that. Got to know that. They want to make sure I'm gonna have to atone for something that you know. Be it's gonna be. He's not gonna get that that that, that total common no. That you know you're not right. No, you won. Yeah. You won the total thing. I gave it to you. No, yeah, you got. I gave you three out of four. Okay. Uh, well, again, but you're not I, gonna win this knowledge. I I I, 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 I technically did because he said it's always been four. They added knowledge later on, and again, I. Give yeah, but on two no. He said that knowledge and... He said beatboxing. And beatboxing. beatboxing. Yeah. But they added that years ago, not like recently. It's been years. It's been a while, yeah. Yeah, bro. I think since... Well, I, Cam, you know what? I, think, I haven't I gotten think, to a Zulu anniversary no, since like fucking... I think, honestly, it came through, through um, the KRS ever. I'm not the mistaken. knowledge part? Yeah. A lot of shit that KRS is dropping. He drops gems, but he also drops a lot of, of KRS truths. Right. Yeah. And that all got right. thrown out the window when all that other stuff started coming out. Right. Yeah. But that's neither here nor there. For that conversation. So, about real positive. quick, which is the hip hop movie? You said it was Big Street, right? He said Big Street. He said and, Wild Style. And then let's go down to top three hip hop soundtrack, movie soundtracks. Here we go with this bold. Okay. So no, I said Juice, soundtrack. right? Okay. Soundtrack, yes. CB4. You, okay, okay. Yes, it was dope. No, no dope soundtrack. Big Street. All right. Three. 
That's your top three? Nah, but you know what? But there's, there's so many. Because again, that NWA fucking straight out of Compton movie. And the one we were talking about. It's not about, a hip hop well, movie. We, we, the, one, the one we were going about back and forth yesterday. Please don't make was? me call my NWA. Well, you was know yesterday. what? Hold on. Who's the man? What about Who's the Man soundtrack? Who's the Man soundtrack was a dope soundtrack. Yeah. That was very much a hip hop movie. That's what I say too. Yeah. Why? Because it was hip hop actors? Because you had hip hop artists that, that, acting? That, yes. You know what I mean? Dr. Dre, Ed Lover? Oh my God. And the words, give me and, the elements and, in the yo, movie. Yo, give me the five lover, elements in the lover, movie. Ed Lover, I need a drop and it says, come on, son. <laughs> You know come what I mean? On, come on, son. I need that come on song with the with the, Yo, with, the hey, with the cardboard. Can, Eddie, you need my glasses? <laughs> I'm Yo. trying to look right now. You know what's fucked up? Is that this is like a senior citizen home right now. Hold on. I, I'm gonna, hold on. Let me text this to you. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, we, While he's yeah, texting yeah. that. Let's go into another question, correct? Go yeah, for it. I think we know what the, the ten top albums. If he was to drop from New York to um, Orlando, All right. if you go vice versa, New York, Orlando, or Orlando, New York, um, what what? T- and you had your CD player in the trunk, can't get out the car, ten disc joint. What ten albums are you rocking? Big Daddy Kane, uh, Long Live the King. Okay. Instinctive Rhymes, uh, the, uh, uh, Tribe. Okay. Straight Out of Compton. Okay. N.W.A. Um. Thank God it's Friday soundtrack. Okay. Um, you have four right now. See, there's so many great albums. And, okay, and, and, whatever, and, whatever comes to yeah, mind. It could right be hip hop, yeah. R&B, don't it matter. Be freestyle, jazz, disco, jazz, anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, Not even freestyle. Yeah, that, 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 the EPs don't count. What, the be, what about the be, best of? It could be, it, it, the best of? It could be a mixtape, whatever yeah, it is. Mixtape, yeah. you know what I mean? uh, fucking mixtape, do out 95 Live. Okay. Uh, Kick Capri, 52 Beats. All right. Uh, any Mel Star mix CD. Right. Um, yeah, it's seven. Shit. Three more. He he stopped, like, either way, He if he's coming from here. Danny D, <laughs> best of Michael Jackson. Okay. Jazzy Jeff got a dope best of Michael, Michael Spit Jackson. Spit bad. Oh, my rest in peace is Spin Bad. The fucking the 80s joint that yeah, he did. Yeah, rest in peace is That Spin one bad, and um one more. Give us one more. You on the turnpike. You you about to come over to GW Bridge right now. Three times dope. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck with you. <laughs> uh, that, that, that can be anything, man. Whatever shit. None of them can be bootleg. That's the only thing they can't be. <laughs> What, what can't be bootleg? None of the, the albums. CD. Oh, the, the CDs? CD, yeah. Oh. Skipping this shit and yeah. all cracked. Or have have a Michael Jackson with Prince together. And <laughs> or have some shit that they mans wanted to put out and they just slipped it in there. Uh. <laughs> trying to promote the <laughs> shit. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. What we have right now, Correct. I don't got nothing else, man. It was a, it was a great interview. I went for that phone call to come. Who he's calling for? Uh, I, I, Say the NWA movies are fucking hip-hop. No, I'm call- God. Who you going to text? I'm gonna try one more thing because the hip hop buster. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see who he gets on the line. <laughs> I feel like I'm on. Who- brother, what's going on? My brother Bishop, what's going on, man? Do you have a couple of minutes? Man, come on, it's you. I wouldn't answer if 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 it wasn't you. Come on, brother. Come I appreciate you. My, my daughter, what's the science? So listen to me, man. I have to. So I'm doing a podcast right now. And they, they're bringing up hip-hop movies. And and I want to ask you a couple of movies. Are they hip-hop or are they not? Straight out of Compton. Straight out of Compton. All right. Uh, hip-hop movie. Okay. Menace to Society. That's, that's, that's not hip-hop, so to speak, but it's a part of the culture, but it was more a reflection of the real life in the 90s, you know what I mean? In the, in the, in the, in the gang culture, all the madness. In Cali. So, uh, but I guess I guess in the culture of it, it still has the essence, but that's more like real life street shit. Okay. Boys in the hood. I, mean? I don't know if I can... That, again, that's a reflection. That's, that's the baby that kind of started it all. <laughs> Bishop, you said exactly what I I needed to hear, and that these gentlemen, because 
they do they're doing a segment where they're talking about hip hop movies and it's easy to go to the B Streets and the Wild Style. I picked Boys in the Hood. I picked Colors as another movie. We get not so How much. How? How? Well, this, so, this is what this is, is your explanation? This is DJ Junebug speaking right now. What'd you say? This is DJ Junebug speaking right now. Uh, one of the hosts of the podcast. He, How is Colors? What is that? Colors. Colors. So go ahead. Tell him why Colors is a hip hop movie. Put him on the mic. Put him on the mic. <laughs> Hold on one second, bro. Let yeah. me get somewhere I can hear you because this rain is weird. Uh, say again. What What makes Colors a hip hop movie? Because of Ice T, because of all the energy of what you saw in that. When they go into the jail cell and, and all the gangsters, all the Crips and the Bloods is at each other, the energy of the music, let alone is hip hop. And us yeah. understanding that growing up, that's everything that contains hip hop and the streets at that time. It was a way pure expression of what we was really dealing with in the eighties and the music that was the soundtrack to express it all. You know what but I mean? we, we're not talking about the movie soundtrack. Let me finish. Let me finish. We're talking about the elements of hip hop. So you're saying if you're if you're gonna sit your ten year old, thirteen year old kid funny to watch a hip hop movie about the culture. You gonna put colors or B Street? Uh, or Beast, yes, or Beast? because that's a part of that's a part of my upbringing on the West Coast. No, I know. I, 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 that. That's a different point of view. There's no, there's no wrong answer there. Right. Hip hop right. on the West Coast. Yeah. All right, Bishop. So, yeah, one last question. I wouldn't show my daughter or my son that at ten years old. No, 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 no. I'm not fucking in the bedroom. Right. No. What I was, what I was. No, no. Right, right. I understand what you're saying. You want to show a ten or twelve. But I'm saying though. If you were to show your child, <laughs> you to show your child, your teenager, whatever, about a movie about the hip hop culture, are you gonna pick a movie like? I would, you know what I would show them? I would show them who's the man. That was fun. It was I'm fun. And that lover. And that was some hip hop shit. But hip hop, hip hop movie because of the hip hop artists being the actors, or because you learned about the culture. It's a little bit of both because that's just like where Queen Latifah went from. You know what I'm saying? That's where Ice-T went from. Okay. That's where Tone Loke went from. They went from real shit in the streets and the hip-hop culture to impact film and give us life and represent representation there. Yeah. So that's hip-hop because Heavy D was on The Rock Show. That's yeah. hip-hop. Yeah. Heavy D was on In Living Color. That's hip hop. So you know what I, I'm I, I, I understand. Up. So I understand what what he's saying, I, I, and I get a different right. view. We get so my, right. my thing is, right. and the way I, I'm gonna see it, the way he sees it is, those Ed Love, Ed, Ed Lover, Dr. Dre, Queen Latifah, uh, uh, Heavy D, they embody hip hop. So everything they do is hip hop. So that's how I would see it too. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Well, I mean. But not just in those artists, but what they gave us in the movies. Of course, somebody can go to Juice and be like, Juice is that movie. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Okay. But what about um, High School High? As ignorant as it was, look at the soundtrack <laughs> that carried it. So that's a hip-hop movie, too. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, um, the one with Dan Aykroyd, when Digital Underground, Tupac and all them was in it. Oh, yeah, um, Transylvania. Hotel Transylvania. Yeah. Transylvania. Transylvania. Yeah. Yeah, all that, whatever that movie was called, you remember the movie back in the day, yeah. all around the world, say, that's another hip-hop movie in the sense of how it brought hip-hop home to us and gave us the, the soundtrack for what we was growing up in. So that's why well, I say you keep going movies, this is me. Right, no, no, of course, but, but you keep on going back to the soundtrack. Identify. Right, you keep on going back to the mm -hmm. soundtrack. There's a lot of movies out there with no, good hip-hop soundtracks. The movie, but when I'm watching the movie, the songs is in the movie, and the whole attitude right. and the rhythm and everything that they're doing is reflected to hip hop. But what? So but what knowledge that. of hip hop is actually getting taught? He, you know what he mean? He's talking you know, about like so. B Street has graffiti, break dancing, um, MC and the DJing. They have the elements of hip hop. That's what he's trying to, uh, you know, come that's across. The, that's as. about but the that's question. How, that's so right. that's when a, somebody asks him about what a hip hop movie is. That's his interpretation Absolutely. of it. Right. And the thing is, it's all situations. Because exactly. right. if you talk to somebody from the West exactly. Coast, movies like Colors and Mental Society and, and even it's Dead Presidents. It's going to have a different impact. That yes. was their life. That, that was their impact. impact. At the same time, you ask somebody about Wild Style or Tougher Than Leather. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we know those are period, are part of that because that's right. what they were created to be. When yeah. Harry Belafonte put his money behind, uh, what you would call it, B Street, 
we knew what he was doing. He said it himself. I, I sat with that man. He said, I've never stopped working, and I had to put my, my energy behind that movie yep. because that's about hip-hop. That was for the youth. Dope. So we can keep saying, but that's a guy who came up doing uh, day or whatever, but yep. it's right, still right, hip-hop. Yeah, right, that yeah. man was behind it. Yep. Blair Underwood in that joint. So, yep. so, so that's what I'm saying. Like, the elements are still there. If it's graffiti, even seeing Van Damme dancing on Venice Beach, that shit was crazy. <laughs> that's the power of hip-hop. <laughs> right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So keep going through movies, we're going to find that. That's right. why I'm like, no, nah, just... You know what I mean? It's just not going to be defined as this is a, a hip-hop no. movie. No, like, good... We got so many things that we influence. You know what I mean? Yep, like I can't yep. even think of movies right now. There's so many that you can consider hip-hop. Right. You know what I mean? So I don't want to just relegate it to where it's if they didn't rap in it, if they weren't on the, the, the train, yeah. if they weren't battling, then that's not hip-hop. There's yeah. so many expressions of hip-hop, even in dance movies, because they always bite in our culture, always our energy, and, and try right. to put it on the screen. Right, right. You know what I mean? So... Yep. Well, that, we, that's my short answer. No, 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 no. Absolutely, we we appreciate your we appreciate opinion. You. Yeah, you yes, know what I mean. Definitely appreciate Bishop, it. brother. I, I definitely got to call you on some other stuff because uh, that that whole Nas thing is coming to the forefront. But that's another conversation, brother. Brother, th that's another conversation. Yeah, uh -huh. you, know, you know what it is. You already know. Thank you for thinking of me and bless y'all. Uh, no, no, bless you, man. You me Thank I'm you. With my, chilling with my daughter, wilding out. I'm like, wait, y'all got real questions for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, Bishop, man, I love you, man. Thank you, man. I'm gonna hit you up, brother. I Thank love you. you. My brother. Yeah, Holy Water Splash, thank you for keeping these conversations alive. This is what we need in 2023. Yes, we more of this. Definitely. So much new music. We still got to get our shit done. We got yep. we got them gyms sitting. We got to get yeah. shit done, bro. Yeah. You already know, brother. Yo, right, stay blessed. Thank you. Blessed. Thank you. Holy Water Splash. Yo, Peace. have a blessed day. <laughs> right. Peace. Peace. Mr. Lamont. Dope, dope, dope. And, and again, that he is he is West Coast. Yep, yep. He is he is West Coast. He was. That next guy before game and again, yeah. Situations alter the past, but yeah. you know, yeah, no. And dope, again, he's a he's a dope MC too. Hip hip hop is, is just so we can look at it in so many different ways, and yeah. it's it's subjective to the eye of the beholder. Yeah, what you think is a, a hip hop movie is not a hip hop movie. I think more along the lines of that. The stuff like you know not, might not necessarily like again, and he blew he threw me off. When he mentioned the Transylvania movie with Dan no, Aykroyd, yeah, I didn't even think about that because they had one. Digital Underground yeah. and Tupac in it, and they was rapping. So, because they had that, is that not hip hop? Because hip hop does not every element does not have to be shown in order for it to be considered hip hop. Yeah, when MC Hammer was dancing for Chicken. And fucking commercials. <laughs> did we look at that? How did we look at that? We said that we... We got a hip-hop said, check? Nah, it was... Everybody no, no, no. said he sold out. All no, no, but sold but, out. But, yeah, you know all that side yeah, shit. Yeah. What did he do? He danced in it. He yep. rapped. Yep. So it was considered uh, as hip-hop as the Sprite commercial with MC Shan and KRS. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was the same shit. They were both hip-hop commercials. Right. But because it was Hammer from the West Coast... Because that's what they do out there. Yeah. Does that make it any less hip hop? No. Nah. Yeah, no. Nah. That's a good one. That's a good debate. We we appreciate we got, that. Listen, that that was a thirty minute. That, but that was good. That's, that was good. But that, that's that what was we good. want. That's we what we want. want everybody's opinion on what they see and exactly. how they see it. Exactly. I, I, and, and I tell June, and he gets all because I say, yo, Juice was hip hop just because. Tupac had on 40 Below Tim's. You know what Man. I'm saying? You can't tell me. And Special that's Ed was somebody's baby mama, uh, baby, baby father. daddy. Like, that's and, hip hop. And he had a oh. Jetta. What's fucking more hip hop? What's more hip hop? Jetta. And Special Ed. <laughs> like, it yo, was in Riverside. And, and every, every <laughs> chick at that time wanted Special Ed to be their baby daddy. Oh, yeah. You know what and, I mean? And then again, yo, you had Trish. I love both of y'all, but fuck y'all. I'm going to keep going. No, <laughs> no but, but I'm saying these are legitimate. There ain't no. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Appreciate you, eh? <laughs> yeah, you know what? Not for nothing. Yeah. The beauty of this is there is no wrong answer. Right, right. right it's right. all in the eye of the beholder. That's it. And you know, when when June, and I think, do you drink still? Or? Yeah, here and there. Well, you know, they, they and I ain't drinking right drink now. It, I have water. Be sober when you watch these movies. <laughs> they give me a better perspective. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but yo, again, man. I always I came up like Crush Goof to me was the ultimate hip hop movie because that had the fat boys in it. You got on your wall, you know what I'm saying? It had new addition in it, you know, because that was their introduction to the world. Like the world, that. right? Yeah. All right, we gonna end it here. We gonna end it here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm good. I don't got nothing else, June. Well, Eddie, right now, um, before we go, anything you working on right now? Uh, you heard now. I've just been doing. I've been doing mixed. Oh, that's another story. 
Yeah, we'll leave that. We'll leave that for some. No, no. Yeah, because Bishop was with me. So remember the movie The Five Heartbeats? Yes. Yeah. Remember the, the, the Eddie Casey scene when they went to the auditorium, when they went out after the auditorium, when they went on after Bird and the Midnight Falcons, that they did that whole scene? Robert Townsend did a documentary that was showcasing the making of that movie. That's my favorite movie. Okay. So I took it upon myself because he was shown it in a New York art house to create something that I hope would be included on the soundtrack. And I took that scene, I flipped it, Bishop dropped 16 bars on it, mm -hmm. and it, we gave it to Robert Townsend. We couldn't get it cleared because Virgin wouldn't clear it. Oh, okay. So they couldn't use it. Right. Fast forward to 2022, King's Disease 3, a fucking amazing album. Yeah, amazing. Can't, Nas got it right, man. The, the one thing that 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 he's doing, one producer, one sound, yeah. one vibe, that right. you're able to enjoy a, a, an album. Because back in the days, hip-hop albums that were made, it was all premiere. It, and, and, you know, it didn't throw off the sound. It was all Marley Marl. It didn't throw off the sound. It was all fucking, you know, one producer. Right. All, all these Kept the flow. Disease series, Kept the flow, yeah. you listen to all of them, the fact that it's just one, yeah, hip it's boy. just hip boy, man. Yeah. But anyway, so this song, all right, I, I got to do this, and I'm going to end it with this. All right. Let's see what you got. And end it with this. So, you know, there's certain things that you know in life that you, you've you done, mm -hmm. you've created a blend years ago. Right. And then you hear somebody do it now, you'd be like, oh, they had to have heard that somewhere because... That's like, that's like somebody recreating the hot day joint, the reach out and touch. All right, so here we go. Oh, this, okay. this, 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 this is fire right here. This one. Yeah. Yeah, this is hard. Let me, let me, let me further it along. This, 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 that's my gun too. But anyway, ain't that song legit? Yeah. Okay, so right, this is 2022. Right, right, right. In 2017, that's when Robert Townsend was doing the documentary, and he put it out, and I created this. Okay. Let's see what you got. Eddie B coming out with some gems here. He hitting us in the head oh, with man. some gems. <laughs> to the left, to the right. All right, facts. Oh, man. I got to open my laptop for this one. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, so... I did that production in 2017. Okay. Me and Bombido. Okay. And I, I gave it to Bishop. Bishop dropped 16 bars on it. He he was like, Ed, you know, because he wanted it to come out. Okay. So he said that he has somebody who plays the keys. Okay. And the kid that he had is like a big key player in LA that he's done Janet and okay. all of that stuff. He's like that guy. Right. He did an interpretation of it. We didn't put it out because Robert mm. couldn't get it cleared. Okay. So that same kid works with fucking Hip Boy. Mm. Ah. And that shit came out. When that record came out, I heard it. I was like. So he, he probably figured, look, couldn't clear it then, but because I got Nas and Hip, Hip Boy, Boy now, yeah. yep. we could get it clear. And again, the cadence of the song. Everything. I'll send it to you later on. Y'all can debate this and use that as one of your samples, uh, uh, the original samples, but. I'm going to leave it with that, man. All right, cool. Yeah, we'll, well, we'll, we'll drop it That's it, Bob. Before, we'll fighting people's shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Before we sign off, Eddie. Um, yes. Plug in your social media. Anybody want to book you? Eddie B. Swift at everything, man. I'm Eddie B. Swift at Facebook, at IG. I don't do TikTok. I don't do... Uh... <laughs> I can see Eddie B. Swift doing a TikTok <laughs> dance. <laughs> Dude, I strap a GoPro to my fucking chest. Like, that's, that's about as much as you're going to get out of me. My website is EddieBSwift.com. Sell my mixtapes, man. That's, you know, I'm out there still. And, and you'll catch me on the road with Cypress or with Sapphire. Dope. Uh, you know, that, that that's current. Right, right. We got to get that freestyle tour going with those five artists and yeah, Eddie B. Swift DJ. Right, we, we gonna, we, yeah, yeah, fact, yeah. We that's going to be a move. That's a move, man. I, and we can do that. Yeah, Rain's going to sponsor it. Yes. We're going to put it in the universe. Yeah, you know I mean? the universe. Hey. Yeah, and it is possible. Anything is possible. Well, 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 I, 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 will, I will leave it with this, man. You guys are doing a wonderful thing. I know you're going to have people who are bigger and, and, and have more importance in the, hi, in the history 
of the culture that we all love because that's why we're doing this. Mm-hmm. But don't never let nobody tell you that you guys ain't got it. Yeah. Like, this this right here is it. Yeah. I made it a point because I know I was supposed to be here the last time and I fucked up because, you know, I was on somebody else's dime. So, circumstances, this, but I made it a point that I was coming over and I hit you up and I was like, yo, I'm going to be there. I have a small window right. if you still want to do it and, you know, it's still a thing. And let me tell you something. The history I have with June didn't start off right. And, you know, today I found out where it came from, you know, and had I known these things before, I probably would have been less inclined. But because I believe in what you guys are trying to do, right. this is a movement, this is love, man. And I wish you guys all the success and the blessings that come along Thank with you. this. Thank yeah, you. Stay the course, man. Thank and you, yeah. it is what it is. EBS signing off. Yeah, man. So definitely. definitely appreciate you. Yeah. Definitely appreciate we appreciate you, you taking time, you know, out of your day. You, you're traveling. You're busy. Obviously, you want to get some relaxation time. So we we salute you. We thank you. Um, I, I need that blend. If you want to put an Eddie B. Swift drop I'll, on it. You know what I mean? I'll uh, send it to you, man. <laughs> that's cool. But um, we appreciate you. Really, really many thanks to you. So thank many, you. many thanks to you, our loyal listeners. And as always, we have another exciting episode coming up. Leave it to up. Eddie to fuck shit up over here. <laughs> I see the fucking arm. Eddie B. breaking shit. Convert breaking shit. <laughs> uh, we have to answer. So stay tuned. I guess you're going to stay on my stomach right now. Hold on. Let's take it, let's take it out. Hold on. Wait, are we doing a uh, freeze uh, frame? Yeah. Are we just doing like a freeze frame shot? Uh, we we, we could do a free spray, we could just fade it out. I'll so. try to hold it to my disc face. So like, that looks Stay tuned, and until then, I've been your host, DJ Carette, alongside DJ Junebug for Respect the DJ's podcast. And we are out with the broken fucking microphone <laughs> because of Eddie B. Swift. Yo, Eddie's trying I to take the mic. Off the table. Peace. He Peace. just got a phone call from the club, said he need an extra mic. <laughs> no, but truth, Eddie. I got like 10, club, 10 texts from them right now. Oh, damn. Peace. Street Dreams Music Group, play that. Frank Jigger is a legend in the NYC party scene, and he made a great impact on NYC nightlife. Frank Jigger is known for legendary hosting skills at the infamous Tunnel Nightclub on Sundays and many more. Along with hosting events, Frank Jigger also worked with many record labels. Unfortunately, Frank Jigger passed away, and he is missed. Frank Jigger, Respect the DJ's Podcast, salutes you.